With two big wins in the bag to start off the season, the Rowdies look to make it three in a row tonight at Al Lang Stadium. It's a new year and new league, but a familiar opponent tonight in Ottawa Fury FC. It's the Rowdies versus Ottawa tonight in St. Petersburg, and your live Rowdies pregame show starts right now. everyone and welcome to your Rowdies pregame show live on this TV Tampa Bay fans are already out in the parking lot enjoying this beautiful weather here tonight for this game as the Rowdies take on Ottawa Fury FC we're coming to you from the concourse of Alang Stadium in downtown St. Petersburg getting ready to kick off week three of the USL season tonight the Rowdies host Ottawa Fury FC I'm your host Heather Donnelly and joining me here at the desk is color commentator Lee Godfrey we'll also check in with play-by-play -play announcer Mike Pepper a little bit later in the show Lee, the Rowdies are looking to make it three in a row tonight. Yeah, it was a perfect start for the Tampa Bay Rowdies to start off this 2017 campaign, the first year in the United Soccer League. Tonight's going to be a little bit different, the first time they haven't played a team affiliated with the Major League Soccer Club. So uh, this team tonight is going to be uh, a little more of that veteran sense. You won't have all the young players that are trying to make their way up to an MLS team. So it's going to have a, a really good barometer of what we can see out of the Tampa Bay Rowdies and what to expect from them this season. Well, let's get the show started with a few news and notes from this past week. Uh, Michael Nanchov, what a game he had last week against TFC2. He was nominated to the USL Team of the Week. Uh, Georgie Ristov had a Goal of the Week nomination. And the Rowdies move into first place in the Eastern Conference with their uh, six points out of two games here at Alang Stadium. Yeah, after a hot start, the Rowdies sit atop the Eastern Conference standings, but a different story for the Ottawa Fury. Yeah, it is. Ottawa had the bye the first week, so they've only played one game so far, so that's why you see them down in 14th. They, they probably should have been able to get out of uh, that game with a draw. It was a late goal, so they lose that game on the road, and now they've got to go back to Ottawa, then come back down here. So it's a tough opening uh, schedule for the Ottawa Fury. And now a look at tonight's injury report. Just one injury for the Rowdies tonight. Leo Fernandez out with an ankle injury. 
But after sitting out the first two weeks with a neck injury, goalkeeper Matt Pickens will be on the bench for Tampa Bay tonight. Yeah, he will be. Uh, Leo Fernandez with an ankle injury, so that will bring in Deshaun Brown up top, and Georgie Ristoff will just move over to that left-hand side. Well, now let's check in with play-by-play -play announcer Mike Pepper, who's standing by with Rowdy's head coach Stuart Campbell. Mike? Thanks, and Coach, it's a, uh, an opponent, though uh, every year is different, and uh, new, new players, but at least what you know with Paul Dog Leash, it's an opponent you know in Ottawa Fury tonight. Yeah, we do. Obviously, we've played each other on numerous occasions, so it's going to be going to be a good game. Like I said, we know them really well, and they know us really well, so it's going to be it's going to be an interesting match. How does Ottawa bring a different uh, perspective to this? Uh, as obviously, with the last two teams against B teams from the MLS, what does Ottawa bring a little bit different than what those teams may have had? Yeah, uh, well, first off, it's slightly easier to, to scout and predict their team lineup because obviously, with the the MLS teams, it can bring uh, a couple of problems, but. Uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. As you said, it's uh, they're an independent team, so they're going to come down here desperate to get a result. And when you look at uh, your team, obviously uh, it is a uh, long season, and sometimes a uh, little nicks. And I think Leo Fernandez day to day might not be in tonight, but uh, the players that's going in for tonight, what do you hope to see from uh, Deshorn? Yeah, obviously, unfortunate with Leo, he picked up a knock in training, and we we try to give him the best possible chance to be involved tonight. Unfortunately, he didn't he didn't make it, and we're very very fortunate that we've got a player of Deshaun's caliber who can who can go and play up front. And also, it's great to have Matt Matt Pickens available to to go back on the bench. Obviously, he's had a had an injury. He's had a couple of couple of days practice. Uh, obviously, he's not he's not ready to start a game, but it's it's great to have him him back as as well as Tam. Obviously, Tam. Had a slight issue for the with his hamstring, so he's fit. So it's it's great to have them guys available and back in the 18 because uh, they're very important to us, especially uh, the longer the season goes. You got it, Coach. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Back to you. Thank you, Mike. Earlier this week, we also caught up with midfielder Michael Nanchoff and goalkeeper Akira Fitzgerald. Let's hear their thoughts on tonight's match against Ottawa. Playing teams like this, like Ottawa, it. Uh... You know, each game is is more important to them. To be honest, I think uh, they'll be coming in uh, ready to go. They need to uh, get a result. Um, so yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a, a different type of game. But uh, every game we play, and we go in with the same mentality of going for three points, playing our game, and and giving everything we have to uh, get the result. No big heads here. There's no big heads here. Uh, Stu constantly tells us never uh, wise to get ahead of ourselves, especially two games into the season. It means nothing. We have six points on the board. It's a great start, but ultimately. We want to win a championship, and that's the biggest thing, and we'll take it one game at a time. But for us to get some goals in front of our fans like we did last game, uh, that's really important to us. As far as someone like Ottawa goes, they're a good team. They're organized as could be. We know a few of the players, especially guys that were left over from last year. Um, but we're not going to take them lightly by any means. If anything, we'll come out with a little extra fire. Lee, I love what Michael Nanchoff had to say there. No big heads on this team. They know they're off to a good start, but they definitely don't want to get ahead of themselves too early in the season. Yeah, they don't want to, and I think that's a product of this year the Tampa Bay Rowdies going with that 22-man roster. There was just too many people in the locker room last year, and a lot of frustration set in with players that weren't getting into that starting 11 and trying to, to battle to get into the first team, and if someone got injured and someone took their spot, maybe they didn't get right back into that starting 11. So this time with that smaller roster, I think it makes the uh, lock room just a lot better and that they know what their goal is like Michael Nanchov said the goal is to win a championship and not worry about uh, uh, you know uh, being 2-0 and oh. they want to go you know 4-0 and 5-0 oh, 6-0 and, oh, and oh. uh, the end goal is to win a championship absolutely well we have to take our first break but when we come back we'll have the highlights from the Rowdies 4-0 win over Toronto FC2 you're watching the Rowdies pregame show live on this TV Tampa Bay If you're new in town and working on your dreams And you don't know what you need We got the perfect plan for you My Blue, My Blue We are here, we're here for you For you, for you, we're throwing out blue Don't you worry now, cause you don't have to Here we always say we got you We are here, we're here for you This is your home, throwing out blue Shh. Can you feel it? That vibe. It's 
here on America's best beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. The new locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. More than a market. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, eat it here or take it home. Fresh made sushi, pan Asian dishes, mouth watering burgers, ice cold beer, specialty drinks, and decadent desserts. Lunch hour or happy hour. Enjoy it here or take it home. More than a market. Come and taste locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. Well, with my go-go gadget legs, probably anything with an exit row. <laughs> like any exit row is, is good with me. I like aisle. I'm not really, if I, if I get window, you know, I don't mind. I'm not scared of flying or anything. I just, I like the aisle because if I have to get up and go pee, I don't have to, hey, excuse me, can, can you just wake up from your nap for a second? Oh, window seat, got the neck pillow on, movies playing, headphones on, and um, a small person next to me. Are you paying? First class, if you're paying. That is. If I'm paying, I'll sit wherever. The cheapest seat. Definitely extra legroom, for obvious reasons. Any other ones in um, first class? <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but I know there's like reclinable like bed ones. I would love to get on one of those, but if not, just the first class would be fine. I'll definitely window when there's a turbulence or something. I want to see what's going on. Our um, trainer, uh, Andrew, he, he usually gets the, the, the window and I'm in the middle, so we always, so always uh, switch and uh, he gives me the window. Thank you, Andrew. I prefer aisle. I prefer to like, read on a plane and sleep, so anyway, so I uh, don't need the, the window to lean up against, so I'll go with aisle. I'd say the window seat, because I like to sleep on the planes. I can just get my head up on the side, roll my jumper up, and I'm usually pretty good at sleeping, so I prefer that. You ain't gonna get disturbed then. Rowdies take their first road trip of the season next week, so hopefully they all get their ideal airplane seat. Welcome back to your Rowdies pregame show live on This TV Tampa Bay. We're here getting you all set for tonight's match as the Rowdies host Ottawa Fury FC. Last week's win over Toronto FC2 was a big one for the Rowdies with four different players getting on the score sheet and the defense earning their second clean sheet in a row. Mike Pepper joins us now from the broadcast booth with the highlights from that match. Mike? Yeah, thanks, Heather. And I'm actually surprised none of the players actually said it was going to be the middle seat. But uh, none of them really had to worry about that after uh, the win that they got last week against Toronto because there were plenty of goals. And let's go ahead and take a look at what happened last week at Al Lang Stadium. First of all, a corner kick from Michael Nance off and the ball's free. Fortunately though, it was Collins able to get it back out wide or make it up Bowden able to get it wide and Nanchoff able to find the head of Damian Lowe and Damian Lowe in the 12th minute able to get his first goal. As a member of the Tampa Bay Rowdies, this is nicely done inside the far post. Rowdies had a one to nothing lead. Then it was an opportunity as the Rowdies found the ball out wide and as Michael Nanchoff gets it, he looks into the box and there it is, dummied by Leo Fernandez. It finds the feet of Georgie Ristoff. Offside claims by Toronto FC2 were unheard as it was well onside when that ball played by Nanchoff and Georgie Ristoff able to convert. And the Rowdies had a 2 0 lead. After Nanchoff stole the ball at midfield and Fernandez found Marcel Schaefer, Schaefer came in on that four on three, had all kind of options. He picks out Joe Cole on the back post. Cole goes and finds the back of the net. 3-0, the Rowdies get the lead. Joe Cole scores on the night his mom came to visit, and he finds a little bit of excitement. Nanchoff almost made it four before the half. A rattler that just clanged off the crossbar on a free kick, just missing the top 90, and the Rowdies had to settle for a 3-0 lead into the second half. Ball came to Marcel Schaefer down into the 70th minute. He's able to cross it in. It goes off the foot of Georgie Ristoff, who gets the assist as Dorsh Deshaun Brown who will get the start tonight, converts it, and the Rowdies have a four to nothing lead. That's the way it finishes as the Rowdies beat Toronto FC four to nothing one week ago tonight. And tonight, another Canadian team, Ottawa Fury, but that was a great result for the Rowdies last week. Yeah, thank you, Mike. And Lee, 
like Mike said, a great result for the Rowdies and great to see four different Rowdies scoring in that match. Yeah, to be able to spread out the scoring and not just rely on one individual is great to show the depth of this club that the Rowdies have going forward this year. And really, that should have been the result for them going against a very young Toronto FC two side uh, who, who just uh, didn't have that much experience out on the field. And, and quite frankly, the Rowdies probably should have put up two or three more goals uh, in that game. It could have been a lot more. So it, it's tough to judge uh, just where the Rowdies uh, sit this year. That's why this game is so important against a team that's not affiliated with a Major League Soccer franchise. Uh, Paul Daglish, uh, who used to coach here uh, uh, for the old uh, Tampa FC team, uh, is really excited to be here and he wants his team to be able to come out and come out strong. They, they had a bad start last week going down 2-0 but they really showed a lot of resilience to be able to come back and tie it 2-2 and almost uh, be able to come out with a point. Well, after spending 10 years with Wolfsburg in the German Bundesliga, midfielder Marcel Schaefer made the move to the U.S. this offseason to join the Rowdies. When we come back, he tells us how the transition is going so far. Stay with us. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we have a taste for adventure because the only way to know how good something can be is to go for it. Try our veggie smoothies, island green, made with spinach, kale, pineapple, banana, and mango. And Caribbean sea burst with carrots, mango, banana, orange, and goji. Adventure begins with never knowing until you try, but always expecting something great. Go for a veggie smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. real people the stain fighting power of oxyclean stains on t-shirt i see it coming out pretty quickly the stain is gone that's a huge difference you could see how it was really disgusting and how white it is now looks like the stain is coming out the oxyclean started to lift it up i'm pretty impressed oxyclean america's number one versatile stain remover now get the power of oxyclean in a detergent one cap beats four of theirs oxyclean gets the tough stains out Welcome back. Fans are starting to fill in the stands here at Alang Stadium. I'm Heather Donnelly, joined by Lee Godfrey, and you're watching the Rowdies pregame show live on this TV, Tampa Bay. As far as tonight's weather goes, it is a perfect night for a soccer match. It really doesn't get much better than this. Clear, 71 degrees, a light breeze, and a 0% chance of rain. If only it could be like this every Saturday, right, Lee? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, that wind could play a little bit of a role tonight, so uh, watch for those uh, uh, high balls on corner kicks. Well, a few weeks ago, midfielder Marcel Schaefer moved here to Tampa Bay from Germany, a big transition after spending 10 years with his previous club. Now that Schaefer and his family are settled in here in the States, we sat down with him to find out what it's been like being the new guy in the locker room. Schaefer with the most appearances ever in Wolfsburg uh, history coming over from that club. The support was amazing from the fans in Germany. They told uh, me, um, okay, this is uh, what you dream about, this is what you talked about uh, all the years, and now we are very happy that you can make this step. I had a great offer of my former club uh, to join the management right now, um, but for me I made the decision um, that I, I couldn't stop my career. I want to, I want to be on the pitch. I am, in my heart, I'm a soccer player. I feel uh, that I, that I uh, want to be on the pitch. I want to train hard. I want to win games. 
in my career I played 10 years for Wolfsburg, so it was a new experience. Normally I was responsible for all the players who come in a new team uh, in Wolfsburg and now I'm the new player. It makes it so much easier to, um, to bond when, when you're from the same certain area. Um, and I think that's why we just like connect in such a good way and um, the kids the same thing and the wife. So. That's, that's really nice and he's such a good guy. The hardest part is uh, to prepare and to organize everything. I think when you move with your family, especially with three kids, there's really a lot to do, a lot of paperwork and I don't like paperwork. <laughs> I've been through those things and that's why when I, like, when my cell came and, and I, was, I, was, I wanted to like, talk to him about it and tell him what it's like and, try to give them some, some good advice. The guys were really very nice, they helped me a lot, especially um, Joe Cole and Martin Wingard helps me a lot of uh, with the first steps here and to organize a little bit with their experience here in their first days. I was uh, 10 days uh, here before my family arrived last Sunday and I think it was important um, to organize a, a little bit more um, to, to prepare uh, some things. Yesterday was the first school day of my two boys and we're really excited. It's, it's always important that the family is, is happy when you make a step like this. The other day we had like a barbecue party, he showed up with his family and, and, and I think it's so important that like, of course you can be invited to a lot of things but if you don't do anything, give anything back, it's always tough but from the day one he, he showed that he want to be a part of this group and he want to be a part of this team and, and you feel like he's been in in our squad for like a month already. He's just a quality player and for me it's easy to play next to a player with, that's, that's so calm on the ball and, and I know I can trust him. The best part is uh, that we won two games. Uh, that's why I'm here. I'm really very, very ambitious. My goal is to finish my career uh, with uh, winning a championship. Quite a change for Marcel Schaefer. He's used to being the guy that welcomes new players into mm -hmm. the team, and now he is the new player. But what an impact he's already made in just two games in the midfield for the Rowdies. Yeah, you can just see the quality that he has. And uh, the one goal that he set up on Joe Cole uh, last week against Toronto FC2, he had three options, and he probably chose the toughest one to get the ball over uh, to Joe Cole to be able to score that goal. So that's where you see the confidence in that sort of player with all those years playing at Wolfsburg in the Bundesliga, that, that a confident type of player is going to make an immediate impact on this team. Well, for more features and interviews like the one you just saw, be sure to follow the Rowdies on social media. You can follow on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram so you don't miss out on any Rowdies updates throughout the week. Check out RowdySoccer.com for more information on how to follow. Tonight's game is just around the corner, so when we come back, we'll wrap up our pregame show and get you all set for kickoff against Ottawa Fury FC. and dine in downtown St. Petersburg. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. 
the fight for the championship continues April 22nd at 7.30. Get rowdy at Al Lang with 90 minutes of manic excitement as the Rowdies take on Charleston Battery. Charleston, bring your A-game because you're going to need it. This is your town. The Rowdies are your team. Tickets start at just $11, and you can meet the players after every game. Charleston, better bring your A-game, because the Rowdies are going to kick your a Come on, you Rowdies! Welcome back to Alang Stadium in downtown St. Petersburg. Grounds crew getting the field all ready for tonight's match. The Rowdies look to finish off this three-game homestand atop the USL standings by adding another three points tonight against Ottawa Fury FC. Now let's scout the opponent and take a closer look at the Ottawa Fury. Well, they're no strangers to each other just because in the United Soccer League, they know each other well from uh, the North American Soccer League. Uh, two wins, five draws, and uh, two losses against the Ottawa in their history. But there's a look at what they've done so far this year under Paul Daglish. That 3-2 loss late versus St. Louis FC uh, on the road. But they did show uh, a lot of determination and toughness to come back, being down 2-0 in that game uh, to be able to come back and tie it and almost get a point there. But uh, uh, look for them to uh, come out better than they did against St. Louis. They're Daglish is going to want them to play better defensively, come out and have a better start, uh, even though they are on the road. So it's going to be very interesting, I think, the first 20 minutes to see how this one goes. Yeah, and like you mentioned, they battled back in their season opener last week. They were down 2-0 to St. Louis, but ended up losing the match after giving up this own goal in the final minutes. Yeah, this one's so tough. We'll take another look at this one. St. Louis, Max Alvarez finds space, and it really has them on the back foot on the counterattack. The Ottawa defenders can't do a thing, and here you have to feel for Sergio Minicio. Big error by the keeper to come out first of all and, and, and he's in no man's land all together and then Minicio just has to do better. Uh, the keeper should not have come out like that. Stay on your line you're probably fine but uh, then it goes back to the own goal and they lose the game. A tough heartbreaking loss for Ottawa. Yeah definitely a heartbreaker. Earlier tonight Mike Pepper caught up with Ottawa head coach Paul Dogleish. Let's hear what he has to say heading into tonight's match. Thanks Heather and uh Coach Paul Dogleish, and first of all, welcome back into uh, St. Petersburg. Obviously, I know in your first go around is Tampa. We've seen you over here, but welcome back into town. Thanks, thanks. Yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing to see kind of the world the Bills done here. It's, it's incredible. You walk around the city, and it's rowdies everywhere. I mean, it's incredible. It's it's a it's a pleasure to come here and, and to play games. And your Ottawa Fury tonight coming in. Only one game underneath your belt, and it was a, a resilient game. Unfortunately, it didn't go your way in the last minute. But uh, how do you look to rebound tonight against Tampa? It's not really a case of rebound, and it's only, you know, uh, it's only one game. Uh, we, we, you know, with the bye week in the first week and training indoors and different things, we, we were a little bit cold, you know, a little bit not really a kind of competitive level, you know, because we'd not played a competitive game. And it took us about 15, 20 minutes to, to kind of get into the game. But when we got into the game, we were... We were really, really good and totally dominated that, and then got hit with a soccer punch at the end. So we'll take great confidence from, from the way we kind of we kind of played the end of the game and, and try and start this game in that manner. Yeah, and this Tampa Bay team, the biggest challenge you're going to face tonight is? Yeah, all of them. You know, it's, uh, it's the flagship team of the league. You know, it's probably the, you know, there's never been a better team in, in the USL. So we're going to have a workout. But, you know, I'd, I'd like to think we're up there with one of the better teams that's ever been in the US as well. So it's going to be two, two big teams going toe-to-toe, -to -toe and hopefully we come out on top. Coach, best of luck tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Heather, back to you. Thanks, Mike. Now let's take a look at a key player to watch tonight from each team. All right, starting first with the Ottawa Fury, it is Eddie Edward. The Ottawa native scored his first goal as a member of the Fury last weekend. The six-foot defender spent three years in Edmonton making 79 appearances before moving back to the Fury. Also made some short stops with FC Dallas and the Puerto Rico Islanders. A big guy in the box that the defenders will have to deal with on the Rowdies. And for the Tampa Bay Rowdies, we look at Michael Nanchoff. Of course, what a fantastic start to the 2017 season for the Rowdies. Two assists for the green and gold last Saturday against uh, Toronto FC to the University of Akron product has over 20 appearances with the Rowdies uh, this season and he is fitting in perfectly on that right hand side. Well with Leo Fernandez out tonight for the Rowdies Georgie Ristoff is moving into his spot on the left side. What effect do you think that'll have on the way the Rowdies play tonight. Well, it's going to be a bit of a loss. Fernandez is so good in uh, really attacking from that left-hand side, but having two strikers up top in Georgie Ristoff and Deshaun Brown uh, getting the start right up top, I think you're going to see maybe a little bit more offense uh, for the Rowdies tonight, although they did have a great start against Toronto FC too. 
Well, that wraps up tonight's pregame show for Lee Godfrey, Mike Pepper, and our entire broadcast crew. I'm Heather Donnelly. Thank you for watching. Rowdies versus Ottawa Fury FC is up next. At the sun, we got today. We got the sun jumping, got it right through the night, got it dialed in. It's just you and me in a perfect day. Sundial, the place to shop and dine in downtown St. Petersburg. The new locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. More than a market. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, eat it here or take it home. Fresh made sushi, pan Asian dishes, mouth watering burgers, ice cold beer, specialty drinks, and decadent desserts. Lunch hour or happy hour. Enjoy it here or take it home. More than a market. Come and taste locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. It's a picturesque day here in St. Petersburg and fans getting ready for a great USL matchup here at Al Lang Stadium. It's the Rowdies and the Ottawa Fury FC as we have a wonderful night here in store. Mike Pepper and Lee Godfrey and Lee, when we look at these teams, both these teams new to the USL, but they're not new to each other. They've uh, they've faced a few times. Yeah, they have, and uh, so this is going to be a great matchup, and it's the first time that the Tampa Bay Rowdies have not faced a team affiliated with an MLS club, so you're going to see uh, a lot more experience out there for Ottawa and a little bit older team, so it's really going to be a nice to set that barometer to see really where the Rowdies will be this season. And for when we look at a couple of the players to watch today, a couple of these players have really made their mark early in the season. Yeah, certainly have. Michael Nanshaw, two assists last week against Toronto FC, two almost had a goal as well. has been fantastic on that right-hand side in the midfield. And Eddie Edward, the Ottawa native, back on the team this season. He scored his first goal uh, last week for the club. He's a big man, likes to get forward on set pieces, so uh, they'll be, have to be wary of him in the box, the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Yes, they will. And we will have the starting lineups as well when we come back. You're watching Rowdy's Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay.
It's here on America's best beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. There's a lot to a name. Especially when that name is a world leader in healthcare. We still deliver the same compassion we provided for 90 years. Plus the excellence you expect from Johns Hopkins. Together we can conquer the biggest challenges and offer your child the very best care. When, when it, it comes, comes to kids, choose Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. We got the sun. place to shop and dine in downtown St. Petersburg. And good evening, everyone, and welcome in here to Al Lang Stadium, where the Tampa Bay Rowdies and Ottawa Fury FC about ready to kick off. Mike Pepper, Lee Godfrey, and we will take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. All right, for Paul Daglish's side, it is a 3-4-3. Irving in goal, Rose Boom, the captain of this side. Cito, DeSantos, and Dixon up top for the Fury tonight. And for Stuart Campbell's Tampa Bay Rowdies, a couple of changes. Well, just the one with Leo Fernandez out. Georgie Ristoff moves over to that left-hand side. Deshaun Brown uh, playing that striker position. Joe Cole uh, captaining the midfield for the Rowdies. Well, let's check in with the third member of our crew, Heather Donnelly on the sideline. Heather? Thanks, Mike. This offseason, the Rowdies and the Ottawa Fury both made the move from the NASL to the USL, even announcing this d the decision on the very same day. But despite that big similarity, these two teams are off to very different starts in their new league. For the Rowdies, this is the third of three straight home games. Ottawa, on the other hand, started off their schedule week one with a bye and then have three straight road games, something head coach Paul Dalglish calls a massive disadvantage. Guys? Thank you, Heather. And, you know, three road teams, but when you're playing in as I think he said, you know, 40 days of snow they've had up there or something along those lines. You're not getting a lot of time in there, uh, Lee. But, uh, you know, she did mention Paul Doug Leach, and he was the former Rowdies coach in the first season, or FC Tampa Bay. And there's Stuart Campbell. Look at both of these coaches. And they've known each other for a while as well. Yeah, they have known each other. And uh, Paul Doug Leach, of course, his dad, Kenny Doug Leach, managed Joe Cole at Liverpool uh, between 2010 and 20. 13 so there is a look at him and yeah they've been dealing with playing under bubbles on artificial surfaces up in Ottawa not even be able to train on a full size pitch so there is a massive disadvantage but that's not just because of league scheduling and, and saying look we're, we're giving Ottawa a tough start you're absolutely right it's because of proximity and, and where they are and you just can't be playing games up in Ottawa at this time of the year yeah as you see Stuart Campbell and he's got to be happy the way his team has started Joe Cole wearing the captain's armband and for those getting a chance to tune in, this is the first time we'll get a chance to see the alternate kit for the Rowdies. We saw them at the unveiling party a couple nights before the season started, but pretty much white head to toe with the green and yellow trim and very popular with a lot of the fans as well. And you know, with Ottawa, they'll be wearing red head to toe. And Lee, this series has been pretty even since these two teams have faced off. Yeah, 2-5-2, two, and two, so exactly uh, even as far as uh, these two teams go. So unless this is a draw, somebody will take a series lead uh, over each other tonight. And uh, 
Watch tonight as well, Mike. A beautiful night for the fans. Cool, but that wind is pretty strong down on the field level as you can see the flags uh, going from right to left. So it will be going uh, into Ottawa's face in this first half. So we'll have to see uh, how each team is able to judge the ball accordingly. Rowdies will be going right to left on your screen wearing the white jerseys from head to toe and, uh, and so on. And as well, we mentioned with Ottawa Fury wearing the red from head to toe. Rowdies will kick off. And Akira Fitzgerald again getting the start. You heard Stuart Campbell in the pregame talk about Matt Pickens. He's on the bench tonight, returned to training, but he is not starting tonight. We're underway here. Well, Akira Fitzgerald hasn't had much to do regardless, Mike, in his two clean sheets now and not conceding a goal yet in this USL season. So that speaks to the defensive side of this Rowdies team. They've been very tight defensively, and they haven't given uh, many players uh, from the other team's chances inside. But that's what Ottawa does like to do. They like to try to throw players forward, get them into the box, and force uh, what we'll see in Lowe and Collins, the center backs, how they will deal uh, with that onslaught that Daglish likes to put forward with this uh, three-striker system. And soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit NikeSoccer.com. Joe Cole pushes the ball towards the corner. He's able to run it down. He's got wrist off behind him, but it go all the way back. Luke Bowden cuts it inside on the left foot. He's clipped up, and it will be a free kick for the Rowdies. And it's a great opportunity early, Mike, for the Rowdies to set something up here. They had two goals early against FC Toronto. Or, sorry, Toronto FC two, and it really set the tone for the rest of that match. Rowdies tried to play quickly as Cole didn't have anyone on him. Jamar Dixon took him down at that point. Dixon is the lone new starter for Ottawa Fury FC, but Eddie Edward had to start up front. He moved back to the to defense as McElhinney had the red card for the last game. Nanchoff will take it on the left foot. He'll send it towards the back post and curls up high. Running on is low. It's still free in the box. Cleared away, but that's not cleared well. It's still free, top of the 18. And it will be a foul called on the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Be a goal kick for Ottawa Fury FC. Yeah, high boot there, but some poor defending, sloppy defending off of that free kick from the Rowdies. A good ball into that far post by Michael Nanchoff. And then Ottawa Fury had at least three or four chances to be able to clear that ball. One of them was whiffed on it. And in the end, at the top of the 18, Dos Santos uh, gets the boot to the face, as they say, and the free kick goes uh, to the Fury. Callum Urban back there, the keeper for the Ottawa Fury. He's a Vancouver, British Columbia native. Got his first cap with the Canadian national team, Mike, in January in a friendly against Bermuda. Well, it is won by Dos Santos, and Damian Lowe comes down as he got tangled up with it looked like Sito. Rowdies will go long looking for Deshaun Brown. And it's run down by Ottawa Fury FC. Long ball, low, first to it. This ball's taken away and that is Bruna. Brown now for the Rowdies into the corner for Nanchoff. It's a little past him. And for viewers in Tampa Bay, mother, modern, bang is the phrase that has everyone watching MOR. Three of Tampa Bay's favorite comedies, How I Met Your Mother, Modern Family, and The Big Bang Theory. Weekdays starting at 5, only on MOR. Just can't get enough. Ottawa Fury will throw it in, and we are just played past three minutes here at Al Lang Stadium. Eddie Edward on the ball. He'll find his right back. Or his right midfield, Jonathan Barden. Barden will play it back again to Edward. Don't expect, Mike, the possession to be so lopsided it had been the two games before playing MLS-affiliated teams, much younger players out there in opposition. Not so tonight where you've got more veteran uh, players that know uh, the professional game, whether it be the North American Soccer League, Major League Soccer, or USL, that uh, this Ottawa team is going to uh, pose uh, uh, more of a challenge tonight for the Rowdies than those first two games of the regular season. Bowden has it for the Rowdies, is overlapping is Marcel Schaefer, but Bowden plays it in. Towards the back post, it's over, and it has to be headed away. Andre Campbell, I believe, back from his midfield, has to head it over as 
little miscommunication. Irving came off his line and he was beat by it, but his defender there to cover him up. Yeah, Campbell, the Jamaican international, seven caps with the reggae boys doing a good job tracking back there on a dangerous ball in. Nanchoff on the far side. It'll be an in swinger, left footed. In and Irving. Good job of catching this one. And it's a smart play by Nanchoff after Irving struggled on that one, but he was up to task, came down with it very nicely inside his six yard box. Yeah, Irving doing a good job there. A bit of a surprise for him and how he ended up being uh, on Ottawa and in the USL. He signed a contract with Major League Soccer before the 2016 MLS Super Draft, thinking that he would be a high pick, and he went through all four rounds unselected. Uh, so that's how he ends up signing uh, with, with the Fury instead. That was a U.S. Amerabank corner kick for Michael Nanchoff, and is again putting the challenge Irving and Darnell King will dribble it too far out of bounds to be a throw in for Ottawa. And a good look at Campbell. Now, Ottawa went down 2-0 early uh, in their opener last weekend. A lot of fight to be able to get back on the road being down at 2-0. So this is a team that's got a lot of fight and determination. Uh, the Rowdies certainly don't want to go down, but they can't change their game or take the foot off the gas uh, if they are able to score the first game of this match, or goal of the match. Akira Fitzgerald got his first touch with his hands. He had the ball played back to him by Schaefer earlier, but they're rolling out. Now the light, or the Rowdies are up towards midfield, and it's Marcel Schaefer. Switching it. Kyle Porter on the bench for the Rowdies tonight. Mike, the former member uh, of the Fury. He probably was able to help Stuart Campbell up, out quite a bit about telling him more about some of these players in the scouting process that he played with last season. And when he signed with the team, he flew back up to Ottawa, and he drove his big red Jeep all the way down from Ottawa. Two straight days, he must not have ran into any weather because he did some pretty good time getting down here to St. Pete. Well, that's maybe why he had the Jeep, too. He had to worry about it. Get through any snowbanks he may have found. <laughs> Nanchoff on it. He has to go back to low and Darnell King on the overlap. Bringing Campbell out and Darnell King looks to go to the line to get it across. He'll whip it across and on the back post is over everyone. Can Luke Bowden keep it in? He does. Runs it down to the corner. Georgie Ristoff now finds Marcel Schaefer. Schaefer and Bowden working together again. Bowden in. Cleared away by Ottawa down to the chest of Vingard, who's able to keep it for the Rowdies. Bowden towards Ristoff, Georgie Ristoff, and it will be another U.S. Ameribank corner kick here at Al Lang Stadium. And it is scoreless between Tampa Bay and Ottawa into the eighth minute. Mike Pepper, Lee Godfrey, Heather Donnelly down on the sideline. Start that is. Not seen a lot of action, although Irving has had to be strong off his line. He's looking to do so again as Nanchoff sends this one in. Thanks, bud. It's headed down, and Neil Collins will be called for arms over the shoulder. Free kick will go. Ottawa Fury FC's way. Well, we see that ball from Michael Nanchoff off the corner kick, and they are going to that back post, I think, deliberately now, Mike. We saw it a couple of times the last game where Damian Lowe was able to get up on one and score. Neil Collins did have a great opportunity at that back post. It was cleared off the line last week. So uh, that's something that they are honing in on, uh, that high ball to the back post, because they've got those big bodies to be able to get up and over top of the ball. Irving sends it long, looking for Dos Santos. To the chest of Dos Santos, who will Fire from distance and it will go out over the line. It will be a goal kick. Well, starting Monday, MOR has your chance to win a getaway to the new Legoland Beach Retreat, which opens today. Watch the Big Bang Theory at 7 and 7.30 and look for the crew to enter. Get more prizes with MOR. On the far side, it's whipped in. Off to the chest, onto Ristoff. It just rolls past his foot. Georgie runs it down. He'll use Luke Bowden. Bowden puts it in. Back post. 
Bounces off the chest of Campbell, and now he'll send it upfield where Damian Lowe runs it down for the Rowdies. Bowden can't catch this one. It will be a throw in for Ottawa. Uh, good start for the Rowdies. They've had the majority of possession so far in this one, just unable to get on the end of the ball inside the box. But I, I like the dynamic of, you know, you don't like having Leo Fernandez out of the lineup because of what he brought. He really uh, can go 1v1 and battle players running diagonal runs into the box. He caused the penalty in the first game of the season. But now you got two strikers out there. And Deshaun Brown almost had it perfect, although they're going to say the ball went over the line beforehand. It was a great save by Callum Irving, but it never was a shot as Brown able to pull it back. But apparently the ball went over the line before Ristoff was able to cross it. And that's kind of what I'm talking about, having two out-and-out -out strikers on the pitch tonight. And there you see Georgie Ristoff. Well, nice little offside. flick there uh, by uh, Brown. So the flag may have gone up, and I think that's what the call was. But still a great little interchange between Georgie Ristoff and Deshaun Brown, who scored his first goal coming off the bench last weekend. It didn't take him long to find the back of the net for the Rowdies. Well, a foul is called on the Rowdies, and Ottawa Fury FC have the chance here to send the ball into the box. They'll send their big bodies in. Over the ball right now, it is Bruna. Gerardo Bruna on the left foot. Jonathan Barton with the right foot, but it's Bruno who sends it into the back post. And Akira Fitzgerald comes off his line to catch that one. He's got a runner running down the side. That's Darnell King. It's a foot race. King and Sito. King able to keep it in. He'll get it back to Nanchoff. Nice there from Akira Fitzgerald. We've seen on corner kicks the two set pieces in the previous game. Fitzgerald going up and just punching that ball out. This time he had the confidence to go up and bring that ball in. Keep possession, a good throw out to Darnell King on that right-hand side. Collins' pass for Bowden doesn't reach him. Tackled away, but it'll be a throw in for the Rowdies. Played up for Dos Santos. Eddie Edward. Uses his goalkeeper Callum Irving on you know, the switch. Obasi. Obasi on a strong run on the side. It'll be a free kick for Ottawa. And fans, you can stay up to date on the late, latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune into USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XMFC Channel 85. Also, don't forget Sirius XMFC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. Ottawa Fury FC looking to set this up again. Over the ball will be Barden and Bruna. Barden this time sends it into the box. Headed away by Vingard. Loose ball comes to Campbell. He'll send it back up, and the Rowdies will look. It's again Campbell. He finds the open man on the wide side. That's Dixon. It will deflect off of Luke Bowden, and it will be a corner kick. Well, we talked about Kyle Porter being on Ottawa last year, and the other one is Sergio Manicio, who actually did preseason here with the Rowdies during the Florida Cup. He scored the own goal, unfortunately, last week. That allowed Fury to lose. Dixon on this ball for the corner. Ottawa native, three caps of the national team during 2018 World Cup qualifying. Ball played in by Bruna, and Akira Fitzgerald catches that one, floated towards the back post, had a little pressure, but he holds on to it. Yeah, and that's where Eddie Edward did come up, was right beside him, the big man, uh, right beside Akira Fitzgerald, and Fitzgerald had to be on his game to be able to bring that one in because Edward was waiting for that ball right behind him just to tap it in. Rowdies just keep possession in their own half. We're into the 15th minute, scoreless here at Al Lang. 
Marcel Schaefer taken down from behind by Dos Santos. Uh, Dos Santos, one of the new members of the club in the starting 11 tonight for Paul Daglish as well. Del Campo on the back line, center back, was a new addition to this Fury side, was not a part of the NASL side. Nanchoff flips it up to Brown. It will go off his knee. It will go over the end line for a goal kick. Now Rose Boom, the captain of this Ottawa side, having a conversation with Dos Santos. Rose Boom just happy to be playing again on a regular basis. He was drafted by DC United and never played with the team, and he was supposed to be one of their up-and-coming stars. He tore his ACL in training with DC United, spent 2013 and 14 with the Rochester Rhinos, 2015 with Austin Aztecs, and now this is his second year in, in Ottawa, and he's got the captain's band on. Irving sends it back upfield. Collins wins the header. Gets it to Schaefer. It's won by Ottawa there. Bowden though runs the loose ball. King up the field into the box. Ship Brown's touch. It's taken away. Rose Boom will look to counter for Ottawa. Rose Santos gets it back out to Campbell. Now Obasi. Ottawa couldn't ask for a nicer evening here in St. Petersburg. Humidity below 40%, which is unheard of for this time of year. Last week it was very hot, and it is a misplay by the Ottawa Fury FC. It'll be a U.S. Ameribank corner kick. For the Rowdies, as Paul Doug Leach looks on, had to throw a sweater on. <laughs> Wouldn't have had to pack it last week. Here's Nanchoff looking to take this. It'll be a left foot in swinger here for one of the players on the team of the week last week. That one's going to float up high, well past the goal, and Callum Irving again comes out strong and comes down with it. Well, interesting that the Rowdies are playing the second Canadian team uh, in a row, the back-to-back -back. on Monday. The United States of America, Canada, and Mexico are going to submit a joint bid uh, to try to earn the World Cup in 2026. So a, a fantastic idea to get the three nations uh, together to be able to get the FIFA World Cup back to this side of the world. Rowdies look to bring out their half. Schaefer. Drops short. Georgie Ristoff. Finds low. Low with a little space. Open though, he'll go sideways. It's now Namchop up to Brown. Deshaun Brown trying to hold off Ottawa. He'll earn a free kick. Dangerous spot here for the Rowdies. Yeah, and just before that though, when Damien Lowe got that ball, Mike, you mentioned he had quite a bit of space. You saw him looking to his left and his right, and no one on the Rowdies was making the run. That's where those Rowdies players have to pick that up. Georgie on that right hand side, point and make a run and give something for Damien Lowe. Give him a target. A player with speed heading into the box and, and try to get on the end of one of those. But in the end, the Rowdies end up coming up with a free kick and another great position. Well, last week, Michael Nanchop, it wasn't far from here, rattled it off the crossbar, didn't get it to dip down on the far post. He's got, looks like Schaefer with them, but it would be Marcel Schaefer into the wall. Nanchop ran over it. Schaefer didn't connect on that one, may have been working a a little bit of a play in, but that one got the wall. Now it is. Zarati's come away with a loose ball. King. 
Damian Lowe looks to switch it all the way across. Bowden on his line, able to bring it down and keep it in. Georgie Ristoff, though, will dribble out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for Ottawa Fury FC. Uh, Georgie Ristoff there with two goals on the season so far. One in the run of play last week against Toronto FC, two, and then he had one from the spot to give the Rowdies that 1 0 victory over Orlando City B, the opening weekend of the USL season. Brown trying to hold off the defender. It comes down to Roseboom. His pass a little far, but Sito collides with Nanchoff. Play on, and it's run down by the Rowdies. Vingard. Now Collins. Schaefer into the corner. It's going to go a little far, and it will go out for a goal kick. And for viewers in Tampa Bay, all the action on the field. Check out all the movie action on Tampa Bay's first broadcast movie channel. This TV, Tampa Bay. Digital 32.2, Spectrum 630, Frontier Fios 463, and Comcast 229. Again, it's after all the action on the field. It's the movie action on Tampa Bay's first broadcast movie show. This TV, Tampa Bay. That one played long looking for Dos Santos, and it will go over the line. It will be a throw in. Space for the Rowdies to come out. Doug Lee shutting instructions to come across. Damian Lowe with it at his feet. Well, there, there you see the assistant coaching staff of the Fury, a couple of uh, great players from different countries. You see Bruce Robilar, the goalkeeping coach, Liverpool legend, now being the goalkeeping coach for right in the middle there. Ottawa. And then to his right was Julian de Guzman, a former great Canadian international player, retired after playing last season with the Fury, played for Deportivo La Coronia in Spain, was named a player of the year at one point, and then came over to Toronto FC to become a designated player. Uh, Julian fitting right in to the assistant coaching duties. Dog Leash loves what he's bringing to this team from a leadership perspective from some of these players. He still could have played another year, but he's been doing a great job as assistant coach. Well, Nanshoff had it. It's now Georgie Ristoff, and the flag will come up offside. Right now, the Ottawa Fury as he had been playing with 10 men is looked like Sito was down. He is on his feet, still irritated right about the midfield and limping a little bit. Let's get a good look at Jamar Dixon. Sito now able to run it off a little bit. He's now centered towards the front. Callum Irving will be looking for Dos Santos. Santos challenge to Collins. Collins wins the strong header. Now Joe Cole. Ottawa Fury has kept Cole in check so far for the first half of this first half. Here's to Shorn Brown. Brown on the turn. Ottawa gets it. We'll send it upfield. Darnell King with some time. Play it off of Ottawa. It'll be a throw in for the Rowdies. Joe Cole taking off the ball. That one, though, header by Vingard sent back in. And it's Dos Santos with it. He's looking for the runner. It's Bard. Barden sends it in, headed away by Lowe. Loose ball down for Ottawa Fury. Shot saved by Fitzgerald. Loose ball out to Roseboom. Roseboom looking for help on the left foot. That one's shot. It goes off an arm, and Fitzgerald comes in, and they're going to say it went off the chest. Ottawa is looking for a handball. The Rowdies are quickly coming out the backside. 
Best bit of action this game, best opportunities for the Ottawa Fury. We'll have to have another look at that great save by Fitzgerald, but also if that was a handball, boy, that could have been close. The referee immediately saying it was chest, but we'll have to see if indeed Ottawa were hard done by here. That would have been a massive swing of momentum for the Ottawa Fury if that's not the right call. It's a quick turnaround there for Ottawa. The Rowdies have had most of the play. Not a lot of danger on net, but certainly possession. Ottawa, other than a couple of balls sent into the area, hadn't had a lot. That was a great shot. Fitzgerald made a great save. Now here's Nanchuk. Rowdies again with possession. Schaefer. Boat, good turn. Boat dribbles in, and it's a good tackle by Barden that gets him off the ball. Up for Dos Santos, and he'll step over. And it goes past Collins. Dos Santos running at net. Fitzgerald gets back. Damian Lowe will stand him up, and he'll get it and clear it out wide. Corner kick for Ottawa. Let's get a look at that last bit. Maybe the handball here. Was it a handball, Lee? You know what, I think the referee got it right. I think Lowe's arm was out, but the ball actually went underneath it looked and appeared to hit his chest. I don't disagree, but arm was out a little bit. That ball was kind of swerving, but it's a tough call. I have to say Ottawa has a good complaint. That one sent in towards the back post. Lowe will win this header and head it out. King and Roseboom. Roseboom comes away with it. Roseboom on the shot. Another save by Fitzgerald. And the ball's still free. Ottawa all over. This one to go over the crossbar, and it will be a goal kick. But Kara Fitzgerald has been great in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, the fans giving him a big round of applause. Two big saves here in the last five minutes of play. Uh, they really have had the better. They've opened up the, the Rowdies for sure at the back, and players are getting opportunities inside the box, second chance opportunities as well as the Rowdies are not able to clear the ball. To be fair, you would expect it to make it. It wasn't far away, but that ball dipping and diving. And Ottawa and Roseman really put a lot on that last one. Well, we saw this last year. The Rowdy is getting the possession and getting to the top of the 18 and then just running out of anything creative. And that's where Ottawa has them. They see the ball at the top of the 18-yard box, and they're going to turn and have a go at goal. That's what we need to see more of the Rowdies, not just stopping like they are right now at the top of the 18. Get those balls into the corner, swing balls into the box, or try to drive something on goal because right now, Ottawa is doing a nice job of standing them up at the top of the 18-yard box. Barton dribbles out of bounds. Rowdies will have a throw. I'll have to get the second ball off the field. Cole, Bowden. Dos Santos brings it down. See, we talked about that possession lane. It is one sided, but certainly the chances, particularly as of late, have been all Ottawa. Yeah, and that's sometimes where the possession can mean absolutely nothing because you look at the best chances of this first half and they've all gone to Ottawa so far. Kira Fitzgerald doing a good job of being in good positions to be able to make the saves. Ottawa will, will clear it out. It'll roll back to the feet of Lowe. Into the 29th minute. We're scoreless here at Al Lang Stadium. Mike Pepper, Lee Godfrey. Rowdies. And Fury. Tampa Bay and Ottawa. Ball into the box. It's going to bounce over Georgie Ristov's head. Callum Irving gets it for Ottawa. And that's what you need to see more of from the Rowdies tonight. Continue to put balls into the box. That one a little bit too high for Ristov, but you're going to get those ones that are going to be on target and really uh, make this Ottawa back three do their work. Rose Boom with it. Bard. It's going to go to the chest of Edward, who's under pressure by Cole. Cole's arm grabs the shoulder. Eddie Edward goes down and a free kick. It's Cole. 
make sure he's okay. And soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit nikesoccer.com. So the free kick goes out of his way. As you can see the Nike symbol back there, but it's the USL logo on the far side, Nike soccer ball. Header won by Dos Santos. Now it's back to his feet. Dos Santos on the help to Barden. Barden will send it in. Collins wins the header and second ball, Georgie Ristoff will send it up the field. One, and now it's Campbell for Ottawa. Turn by Campbell. He's got Bruna, and as Jamar Dixon is taken down by Damian Lowe, free kick will be about 30 yards out, not far from the center of the field. And unfortunate Damian Lowe is not seeing a yellow card here because he came in from behind and, and completely cleared out Dixon there. And even if you got a piece of the ball, when you come in from behind like that, it's still considered a dangerous tackle. So another good opportunity here from the Ottawa Fury here in the 31st minute of play. Rowdy's had the wall set on the other post. Now they're coming across. Kira Fitzgerald doing it. We've got the whistle blew to tell the team back, but certainly not the whistle to take it. Referee is setting the line right at the 18. So this is a 28, maybe 29 yards away. On the right foot is Barton. It'll be the left foot. It's go off the Rowdy's wall. It'll be a corner kick. I believe that was Sito. That came up. It was Sito on the left foot, and the wall did its job. So Ottawa Fury FC on the corner. Barton into the back post. Fitzgerald is over his head, running back from Edward. And he played out by Damian Lowe. It'll be a throw in here for Ottawa Fury. For viewers in Tampa Bay, you can catch the Rowdies at home all season on this TV Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay's first broadcast movie channel. Find this TV at Digital 32.2, Spectrum 630, Frontier Fios 462, and Comcast 229. This TV, your broadcast home for Rowdy Soccer. Joe Cole. It's in the ball is free. Dixon's tangled up. It's Dos Santos. Nice individual work, but he mishits it from there. But they get the roll. Edward, possession for Ottawa. Now back towards the corner. Barden. Sends it across the goal. Ball will bounce past a couple of players, and Deshaun Brown will run it down. He'll try and use his speed. He'll get it to Nanchop, and the ball's still in, but it'll be a throw in now for the Rowdies. Tampa Bay Rowdies averting a little danger there is Stuart Campbell expressing his thoughts. Yeah, he's not happy with how this game has gone the last 10 minutes of play. The Ottawa Fury have come along greatly in this match, and they're really starting to put the pressure on the Rowdies. We need to see a, a better reaction because this is the type of teams that are going to be causing the problems, not like week one and two where you're playing basically youth sides for an MLS team, and, and it showed. And this is going to be a much closer game as far as the talent that's out there on both sides of the pitch. And how misleading can that be, Leo, when you look at it? Because you have a relatively easy go of it, even though you only beat Orlando by one, but the possession and domination was one-sided. Do you start to wonder, is that what more of that's about? Yeah, you have to know if it's an honest reflection uh, of, of the team, and that's why they can't let that. You heard Michael Nanshaw in the pregame. You can't let those sort of victories go to their heads because you're going to be coming up against uh, uh, some teams that aren't affiliated and that have a little bit of money to spend, and their goal is to win uh, USL and be competitive night in, night out, have more consistent starting 11s like the Rowdies have had in the first three games as far as being able to side the same team night out. Well, Deshaun Brown is in Irving is outside his box, and he has to get to it. The Rowdies dangerous there, and if Brown could have been able to touch it a little better, he had Irving out of position. He just missed it. That one will roll over the line and be a throw-in for Ottawa at midfield. 
Irving may be a little lucky in that situation. And Paul Doug Leach explaining or expressing some thoughts to his players as well. And Georgie Ristoff flips Obasi from behind. Free kick will go on him. And fans, you can stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune into USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts, Mondays at 9 Eastern on Sirius XM FC, Channel 85. Also, don't forget, Sirius XM FC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. And that's 9 in the evening on Mondays as that ball goes over the line. It will be a goal kick for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Well, look here, Fitzgerald not asked to do much in the first two games here at home, but he has been called on uh, tonight uh, for sure to come up with a couple of big saves to keep the Rowdies in this one. And so far, Callum Irving not having to do much as far as stopping a shot in this one. He's had to go up on corner kicks uh, for sure. And Clear the danger, but so far tonight, the man of the match has been Kira Fitzgerald for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. So low will have it now. Looking forward. King. And underneath the foot of Ristoff. Strong header by low, but it's to the chest of Rosebone. Take away by Joe Cole. Ottawa, a much better team defending than anything that the Rowdies have seen so far this year. Once they get it over into Ottawa's half and they make a pass, there's somebody closing down uh, the Rowdy player with the ball almost immediately, doing a fantastic job of giving the Rowdies not much room to breathe and they have to make some quick decisions uh, moving forward to try to get through this midfield and back line. Well, Luke Bowden. It's Nanchoff now. Again, possession, but Ottawa over defends well. Ben Gar has to switch it out to low. Ottawa will do this all night long. They'd be happy to do this if the Rowdies are not going to try to penetrate inside. They've got to go over the top or, or, or try it. A, a quick one, two, or take the shots from the top of the box. But right now, again, Ottawa winning possession, turning the ball over the Rowdies, and the free kick goes the way of the Fury. Eddie Edward helped up by his captain, Rose Boone, Lance Rose Boone. You can see Deshaun Brown, the shoulder lowered, but it lowered into the back shoulder blade, and that's why the whistle blows. Hometown young man getting his chance to play back in Ottawa. Two Ottawa natives on the side, one of three Canadians in the starting 11 tonight for Paul Daglish. Long ball, and they're going to head it back to Irving. Well done as Brown went a little pressure on Martin Del Campo. Irving quickly gets it out, and it's Barden up the near side. Barden's ball will not stay in bounds. It'll be a throw in. Let's check in with Heather Donnelly down on the sideline. Hi, Mike. As you guys talk about Eddie Edward there, we talked with head coach Paul Dog Leash this week, and he had some really kind words to say about Edward. He said he's a natural defender and a model of consistency. He was really happy for him to get his first professional goal of his career last week. And he said that Edward should be the starting right back for the Canadian national team. So uh, a lot of faith in his defender, guys. Thank you, Heather. And solid start so far. Joe Cole will go at him. He's being marked by Roseboom, but Edward will force him to turn around. He'll drop it back for Vingard. A little help from Darnell King. King marked by Campbell. King's ball in, cleared away, and Lowe will run it down. And 
One thing we haven't seen in this game that we saw in the first two, Mike, are exactly that scoring chances. They put a lot of opportunities on goal against OCB, but some great goaltending in that match kept them off the board, and they put a lot of balls in and some great scoring opportunities in that first half against Toronto FC2. And just haven't seen that same chances being generated that were in those first two matches. King's long ball taken away by Del Campo. Cito finds the open man. It's Campbell down the sideline. Campbell, Damian Lowe on a big tackle will go over the line and be a corner kick. Low went in strong. Ottawa. Campbell's asking for something else. Ooh, it's a hard tackle coming in there, knocking that ankle. But Ottawa doing a great job on their counterattack opportunities, Mike. They are creating a lot of space up those flanks and getting balls into the box. And the Rowdies have got to do better at defending that counterattack because right now uh, this has been uh, notwithstanding the first few minutes of this match, Ottawa has come along fantastic, creating chances. Ball sent in. Fitzgerald punches strongly, and he's taken down. He collided. Bowden hit him, but I think an uh, Ottawa player may have pushed him into him. But Akira Fitzgerald, good off his line there. He's actually squatted over a little bit, maybe got the wind knocked out of him a little late. Yeah, Let's watch see. him come in, and Bowden comes into Fitzgerald. And you can see Akira Fitzgerald. And Del Campo kind of was Bowden sandwich between Del Campo and Fitzgerald. And I think Fitzgerald, he's up now, but it didn't quite get him at first, but maybe knocked the win out just a bit. Del Campo went in with his back first, and thus the foul. on the far side. Off the back of Darnell King. Vingard with the second header. Roseboom runs it down and gets it to Barton. A tackle by Ristoff. He's pleading for the call, but it'll be a throw in here for Ottawa Fury FC. Campbell trying to tee it up. King will win the header just barely and he'll send it upfield. Well as we pass 42 minutes Lee I, I, I would think that Ottawa withstood the first 20 minutes of possession really didn't give up a lot but certainly had to chase the ball a lot and they've been had the better chances since then. if you're Stuart Campbell you just want to reorganize I would think and that might not be the case if Fitzgerald has to hang on to another shot by Zito. Yeah, there's a lot of space when the Rowdies are defending Mike on top of that 18 yard box that that Fury are finding those open men and they're creating some chances uh, from outside positions. Yeah, you expect Fitzgerald to, to make those stops from those long shots, but they're continually uh, creating. Well, as Schaefer is run over by, behind by Roseboom, he's letting his defenders hear it. He had his back to the play. He's letting him know either you don't give me that with someone right on me or you let me know more so. So he attacked it. Fortunately, Schaefer had his body between the ball and the player Roseboom did go through him but almost disaster for the Rowdies there. Ball sent up the field. Bruna offside is Dos Santos. As my intervention, I thought if you're Stuart Campbell, you're just maybe let's regroup and let's just take advantage of some of these things. But maybe the little shock of not having the better part of play affected his, his team's thought process for a little while. 
It, yeah, and if you look at the flip side of that, if you're Paul Dogleish going in at the half, you're, you weather that initial storm and you're going to be very happy with the way that your team played in the first 45 minutes. Kira Fitzgerald having to make three pretty good saves uh, here, punch out uh, balls and, you, you know, Ottawa really took advantage of their opportunities, especially on the counterattack. They're playing the game that the Rowdies would like to, especially in those wide positions, getting balls into the box. Final minute of the first half, plus any stoppage time. We really didn't have a lot, maybe one minute at tops. I believe it will be one minute, and for Lance Roseboom, it's the loose ball for Ottawa. Barton to go up the field. Ottawa just sends it out. They get a little careless there. The Rowdies will have a throw in. Georgie Ristoff, can they get something before half to Sean Brown? Drops it for Vingard. Vingard wide for King. King looking for someone in the box. Doesn't have it. Nanchoff back to King. Michael Nanchoff under some pressure. And Ottawa comes away with the ball. The Rowdies. For Dos Santos. The Rowdies refuse to put balls into the box. They're passing to the top. And a dangerous chance here. Rose Boom Fitzgerald, they both miss it. Ball played in by Dos Santos. It's still free though. Rose Boom gets it back. Obasi back out to Dos Santos. In for Campbell. Campbell and Fitzgerald on the near post will get it. He'll roll it short for Cole, but Ottawa, five defenders back. Shouldn't have a lot of places to go into Sean Brown's clearance just up the field. And another chance for Addies on that ball by Roseboom. You know, you almost wonder, Fitzgerald came out, but if he doesn't make that run, does Roseboom run the route more circular and get to the ball? He almost had, thought he was in a race, and it may have worked out better for the Rowdies. Yeah, I think Fitzgerald is just trying to lock him out more than going for the ball, knowing that he wouldn't be able to get there uh, in time. But once again, the Fury looked much more focused than the Rowdies do moving forward into the box. Yeah, as we... Come to the conclusion of the first 45 minutes. Looks like Heather Donnelly will have the head coach of the Ottawa Fury, Paul Dog Leach. Let's check in with Heather on the sideline. Thank you, Mike. Coach, last week in your home opener, or in your opener, you said that the team was shaking off the cobwebs a little bit. You got off to a little bit of a slow start. How would you compare the start tonight against the Rowdies to that? Yeah, I think we're, we're in season mode now, you know. I think we, we've competed really well. We've had the better chances. We, we've not had the better territory. I think we've allowed Tampa possession, but they've not hurt us at any stage, really. Put a couple of cross in the box. We're very comfortable defending uh, in our deep block, and we've looked really, really dangerous uh, in, on the counter. And I think, you know, a little bit, you know, we, we could have maybe had three or four goals. The, the goalkeeper stood in his head. So, got it, please. We want to possess it a little bit better in their half. Uh, and we want to get a little bit more pressure on, on the Rowdies in, in their half, and, and we should be fine. Thanks, Coach. Back to you guys. Thank you, Heather. Well, that analysis sounds familiar there. It's pretty well described. It is scoreless here as we have played 45. we got a halftime coming up. You're watching Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. Today, we can connect more. Play more. Do more. And all that more takes energy. At Duke Energy, we're doing more too. More innovative technology, like ways to fix outages before they happen for more reliable energy every day. So no matter how much you do, we're always here with power for your life. Can you feel it? That vibe. It's here on America's best beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. If you're new in town and working on your dreams And you don't know what you need We got the perfect plan for you My Blue, My Blue We are here, we're here for you For you, for you We're throwing out blue Don't you worry now, cause you don't have to Here we always say we got you We are here, we're here for you This is your home 
Some people are blessed. Compassion and empathy are second nature. Being selfless increases their self-worth. They consider caring for others a calling, not a sacrifice. And we consider them our role models. Because if humanity can make the world a better place, imagine what it can do for healthcare. Well, it's halftime here at Al Lang Stadium in St. Petersburg. Your Tampa Bay Rowdies and Ottawa Fury FC are scoreless. Mike Pepper, Lee Godfrey, as uh, we look at this, and, uh, you know, Lee, I think that uh, one thing we could gather is Paul Dogleach has a long coaching career, but if you ever wanted to go into the analyst booth, I mean, that's, that was a perfect analysis of what we saw in the first half. Ottawa had to chase a little bit in the big, but they didn't weren't hurt by it, but certainly – they came back, and if it wasn't for Akira Fitzgerald, we'd probably see some crooked letters on the scoreboard for Ottawa. Yeah, let's take a look at those first uh, half highlights because you're absolutely right. There was a an initial push by the Rowdies early on off of set pieces, but that's all it really was, not having uh, Irwin really having to do uh, much in that first half. Again, uh, outside balls, that's probably the best chance the Rowdies had uh, to Shorn Brown, which is that little flick on uh, there was it going wide tough to say but after that Ottawa Fury really doing well on the counter attack there's the first big save for Fitzgerald luckily uh, no one was sitting there in the middle of the box because that rebound just flies right by Neil Collins it goes to Roseboom and not able to do anything with it but some great tackling there by Roseboom and another shot on Fitzgerald forced to make another save and then there could have been a penalty call possibly in that first half, but again, it's 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 the outside work and spreading out the defense right now. There you see Fitzgerald just coming across, and luckily Roseboom wasn't a little bit far more forward because he's popping that one in the back of the net if he's there, Mike. Yeah, it was, uh, again, I think the run going in may have made Roseboom come inside as opposed to going out, which maybe kept a bigger shot. You can see the possession down at the bottom, Lee, but really the shots and the shots on goal that's the story of this one. Ottawa, the better part of the dangerous opportunities. Yeah, four corner kicks, one more as well than the Rowdies, and, and three shots on target, forcing Fitzgerald to make saves. And that's one thing that the Rowdies have not done yet tonight and something that we haven't seen in the first two games where they don't have a shot on goal yet. We will uh, come back here to Al Lang Stadium. More of the halftime show coming up. You are watching Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we have a taste for adventure because the only way to know how good something can be is to go for it. Try our veggie smoothies, island green, made with spinach, kale, pineapple, banana, and mango and Caribbean Seaburst with carrots, mango, banana, orange, and goji. Adventure begins with never knowing until you try, but always expecting something great. Go for a veggie smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies.
showing real people the stain fighting power of OxyClean. Stains on the t-shirt, I see it coming out pretty quickly. The stain is gone. That's a huge difference. You can see how it was really disgusting and how white it is now. Looks like the stain is coming out. The OxyClean started to lift it up. I'm pretty impressed. OxyClean, America's number one versatile stain remover. Now get the power of OxyClean in a detergent. One cap beats four of theirs. OxyClean gets the tough stains out. The new locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. More than a market for breakfast, lunch, dinner, eat it here or take it home. Fresh made sushi, Pan-Asian dishes, mouth-watering burgers, ice cold beer, specialty drinks and decadent desserts. Lunch hour or happy hour. Enjoy it here or take it home. More than a market. Come and taste locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. We've raised the stakes. Expectations are high. Our biggest season yet will break records with elite players and future stars. Innovative technology and new homes. We're growing the game in our communities and across the nation. Are you ready? As we go into week three play, let's take a look back at week two of the USL season. Set up by Nansel Selbel, Carlton Belmar notched his second goal in as many games to secure the 1-0 win for Swope Park Rangers against his former team, Portland Timbers 2. Louisville City converted on three of their eight shots on target to take the win over Orlando City B 3-1, with Orlando's only goal coming off an own goal before half. Louisville came out strong in the second half and were able to put the game away with goals from George Davis IV and Luke Spencer. The Rochester Rhinos jumped out to a two-goal lead, but an extra time before half, Bethlehem Steele cut the lead to one, thanks to a Charlie Davies PK. Coming in off the bench, Johan Graf was able to seal the 3-2 win in the final two minutes for Rochester. New York Red Bulls, too, played strong defense, shutting out the Richmond Kickers 1-0 in their inaugural game at MSU Soccer Park. Zico Lewis found the back of the net in the 69th minute for the Red Bulls. Andrew Wiedemann and GB led FC Cincinnati to the 1-0 win in Pittsburgh as GB notched his second goal in as many games. The Riverhounds played most of the game with 10 men after Gale Agbasumade received his second yellow of the game in the 42nd minute. Phoenix Rising struggled to combine in the attacking half as the Real Monarchs took the 2-0 win at home, winning their second game in a row as Phoenix fell to 0-2 to start the season. 0-0 at half, the Charlotte Independents controlled 62% of the game's possession but the Charleston Battery put two away within seven minutes to top Charlotte 2-0 in the Southern Derby. Two home games, two wins for the Tampa Bay Rowdies to open their USL slate. Michael Nanchoff led the team with two assists as he set up Damian Lowe and Georgie Ristoff early in the first half for the first two goals of the game, as the Rowdies handled Toronto FC 2-4-0. Oklahoma City Energy FC took to the road for the second week in a row as they faced off with the Colorado Springs switchbacks in snowy conditions. The game ended in a 1-1 draw with first half goals for both sides as neither team was able to find the difference maker in the second half. Tulsa earned their second win of the season and handed RGV their second loss as Joey Calistri found the back of the net for Tulsa in the 31st minute. A sellout crowd of 5,566 watched St. Louis earn their first win of the season, a 3-2 victory over Ottawa Fury FC, thanks to a known goal deflection in the 88th minute. Billy Forbes led his team for the second week in a row this week, a goal and an assist, and a 3-0 win over LA Galaxy 2. Rafael Castillo notched a goal for himself off Forbes' assist as San Antonio starts their 2017 season 2-0. Brennan Griffiths will be the name remembered for Reno 1868's first goal in the history of the club, but neither Reno nor Vancouver Whitecaps 2 could completely pull away as the game ended in a 1-1 draw. 
Whilst the Nishan Sammy Ochoa led the charge as Sacramento Republic FC delighted a sellout crowd of 11,569 fans to a 4-0 win over Orange County FC. Nishaw finished the game with one goal and one assist, combining with Ochoa who finished with two goals. And that's your look around the league. For USL Network, I'm Morgan Conklin. We got the sun. We got today. We got the sun. Jumping. Got it right through the night. Got it dialed in. It's just you and me. In a perfect day. Sundial, the place to shop and dine in downtown St. Petersburg. The new locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. More than a market. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, eat it here or take it home. Fresh made sushi, pan Asian dishes, mouth watering burgers, ice cold beer, specialty drinks, and decadent desserts. Lunch hour or happy hour. Enjoy it here or take it home. More than a market. Come and taste locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. Welcome back to USL Soccer here on this TV Tampa Bay. After 45 minutes, the Rowdies and Ottawa Fury FC are scoreless. I'm Heather Donnelly, joined here by Rowdies head coach Stuart Campbell. Coach, scoreless here at the half, not too many opportunities for your team. What are your thoughts on the way they played in the first half? Yeah, I thought we started the half really well. We moved the ball quickly and we had a couple of opportunities in the first sort of 15, 20 minutes. And then uh, for the last sort of 20, 25 minutes, I don't think we've been patient enough in possession of the ball. I think we've been too anxious to, to go long a little bit too quick. So I want us to be a little bit more patient in the ball and, and keep moving the ball quickly. You had such an explosive game last week, scoring four goals. What can you adjust here in the second half to have that kind of production? Yeah, I think obviously I think that's what the, the guys wanted to do again today. They wanted to go and get two, three goals in the first sort of like 20, 30 minutes. That's not always possible. So just told them calm down, be be patient in possession and keep moving it and something will open up because obviously Ottawa will come here and they're, they're defending very deep and looking to hit us on the, on the counter attack. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. The message from Stuart Campbell, be patient, guys. Well, thanks, Heather. And uh, we've got 45 minutes to come, but we will remind everyone two weeks from tonight, the Rowdies, after going on the road for two over the next two weeks, will come back here to Al Lang Stadium. Right here on this TV, Tampa Bay, it'll be Tampa Bay Rowdies and Charleston Batter Battery, the Charleston Battery. And that's on April 22nd. Digital 32.2, Frontier 463, Spectrum 630, and Comcast 229. It's this TV, Tampa Bay, for Rowdy Soccer. So you get a good look at the moon. And we're just, I think they're just showing off the new cameras here, Lee. Yeah, fantastic shot there. And you heard Stuart Campbell, when you talk about shots, Mike, that is one thing I do understand what he's trying to preach and be patient. But the way that Ottawa is defending, if they continue to do so, they're going to have to adjust and do something a little bit differently because Ottawa will sit back and they will defend in numbers and be happy to walk out of here with a nil-nil draw and try to nick one on the counterattack. They don't sit back to start the half. They'll send about five or six long looking for Dos Santos, but the Rowdies will have it. Luke Bowden try and work it out of the back with Schaefer. Mike Pepper, Lee Godfrey, you heard from Heather Donnelly with the head coach Stuart Campbell. We are second half action here at Al Lang Stadium, USL. Soccer between the Tampa Bay Rowdies and Ottawa Fury FC. Here's Marcel Schaefer. 
Bowden on the outside along with Georgie Ridstock. And again the Ottawa Fury you can pretty much see all red shirts in that shot. Ten guys within 25 30 yards of the ball. Rowdy's looking for the opening as they find out wide it's Luke Bowden. Bowden and it's going to go off the arm headed on to goal Georgie Ristoff and the Rowdies have opened it up here in the 47th minute. Well that took a fortunate deflection there on the way into the goal as Callum Irving was coming out to get it and Georgie Ristoff marches right in and has a great little header Bowden on the left and there you saw the deflection so that ball comes down a lot sooner than it should have and Georgie's able to come in beat Callum Irving to the ball and head it over top of him on the angle for his third goal of the season. Jonathan, Great start for the second half here for the Rowdies. Jonathan Barden had his hands on his side, but it goes off his arm, and Georgie Ristoff first to the ball. And the Rowdies, before many of the fans get back into their seats from the halftime, have a one nothing lead. But Ottawa, right there, trying to answer as Dos Santos had a chance in the box. Marcel Schaefer gets his feet clipped. Actually, he clipped the feet of Jamar Dixon. It'll be a free kick for Ottawa Fury FC. Well, that time, the Rowdies were able to spread out the Fury a little bit coming forward on that left-hand side, and they do send the ball into the box. And you start doing that, and good things happen, whether it be a mistake by the Fury, someone not picking up their man, but Georgie Ristoff read that perfectly on the deflection and a great little flick on to go over Irving and give the Rowdies the lead. Well, Bruna is on the ball along with Barton. Bruna is the left footed Fury member. Barton on the right foot. Three man wall. Wads about 35 yards out. Will they go on net? Will they play it into the area? It will be Bruna. Will go on net and it will be wide for Akira Fitzgerald. Fans stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune into USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM FC Channel 85. Also, don't forget Sirius XM FC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. The Rowdy's playing it out of the back here now with the one nothing lead and we'll see how that one changes a little bit but now it is a nice through ball for Nanchoff. Nanchoff looking to get into the area it goes around the defender splits him he's pushed down it'll be a free kick should be outside the area but it will be a free kick for the Rowdy's in a very dangerous spot. It all started by a great through ball Mike from Joe Cole to give it to Nanchoff and there certainly was a push there in contact. I think it did happen outside the box and a yellow card to Campbell. But it is just outside the box. So Andre Campbell gets the yellow card. But great work by Nanshoff of creating as he went through two defenders. That is the job there. The assistant referee made that call because initially uh, Matthew Miscannon did not make the call. Yeah, waved it on and as the uh, assistant kind of gave him a little clarification also showed a yellow card too. Ristoff on it with the right foot. Nanchoff was the left foot. Ristoff will run back into the area. I mean Nanchoff will he go on net? No and it will go over everything and it will be a goal kick. I'm not sure I agree with that play there Mike Nanshoff I, I think just trying to go for a goal but on that angle that's a pretty tough angle you need to get a lot of curl in that to try to get that to the back side netting I would like to have seen them maybe something driven that hard but a little lower and just get it in to players making the run into the six yard box Collins will win the header Roseboom will get the second ball looking wide it's Campbell on a yellow card now and not Darnell King may get a yellow card and as Campbell was taken down Campbell pushed it through and it will be a yellow card issued to Darnell King 
Campbell's still down, but like King was just late. Don't disagree with the call. I don't know if he Campbell seems to be holding the hip a little bit. Maybe he came down on the hip. Another look. Here's Campbell coming across. Oh uh, yeah, and he does he does get him pretty good on the side. He does clear the ball away, but that was a pretty hard knock there by Darnell King. So Ottawa will have the free kick. In a dangerous position, 52nd minute. Campbell still getting help. They are looking more at the hip, as you saw. King kind of a little over the top, but maybe undercut him more so as Paul Doug Leash. Yeah, having a conversation there with Julian de Guzman to see if he can in fact go on or what changes they'll have to make. Campbell's up. And again, it will be Barden and Bruna over the ball. Barden with the right foot, Bruna with the left. Rowdies will set a three-man wall up themselves. Cole Nanchoff and Ristoff in there. Line held about the 18. Big bodies for Ottawa sent up. They'll play it towards the back post. Collins wins the header. It's high at the 18. It's now free in front. And chased down. Damian Lowe, first one to it. He's got help. He's got a man, but he's not going to hold on to it. Through ball, tackled away by Eddie Edward. As Joe Cole making a run, could not get to the loose ball on the front end. Great play by Edward to break that one up. Low with quite a bit of pace coming up that left side, and he was just trying to bend that around to Joe Cole, but a nice sliding tackle there to break that play up. Here's Schaefer. Nanchoff looking for Ristoff. Georgie Ristoff with a touch. And Irving with the save to his left. Great ball by the Rowdies. I think that may have been Nanchoff looking for Ristoff. It'll be Nanchoff with the U.S. Ameribank corner kick. Yeah, it was Nanchoff again. And there you see Georgie Ristoff just gets a piece of it. He looked up with the sky thinking, geez, I'd like to have that one back. Nanchoff sends it in and Swinger. Irving tries to punch him. It's headed away instead by center defender Del Campo. Loose ball run down by Schaefer. Long ball looking over the top. Low wins the header. Played out. Nanchoff towards the corner. Deshaun Brown using his body. Del Campo. Able to clear it up, but it goes to Nanchoff. Michael Nanchoff just keeps possession. Switched by Vingard. Bowden on the long side. Bowden with the assist earlier from that same side. It's Schaefer, though, back to Bowden. Able to keep it in, and he'll cut inside. Now he'll flip it in. Wrist off. As it taken away and cleared away by Bruna. Job there by Bruna to come back and clear that one away. And they'll flick there onto the box. Vingard now with Nanchoff. Rowdies with the one nothing lead. Back to Bowden. Bowden into the box. He'll cut it across and it will go off of Ottawa Fury FC is Obasi. As to send it out, Bowden drove that in and it will be a U.S. Ameribank corner kick. And for viewers in Tampa Bay, mother modern bang is the phrase that has everyone watching M.O.R. Three of Tampa Bay's favorite comedies, How I Met Your Mother, Modern Family, and The Big Bang Theory. Weekdays starting at 5, only on M.O.R. Just can't get enough. And as Nanjoff looks at this U.S. Ameribank corner kick, it will swing away from the goalkeeper, this time driven in. And it's off the knee of Roseboom and off the foot of Brown. Saved by Irving. Loose ball. Edwards clears it out. 
Well, wow, what an opportunity there, Mike. I don't think that Brown thought that was going to come back to his feet. Kind of surprised him. He did get a piece of it, and Irving also able to get a piece of it. So close to making this 2-0. Well, the Rowdies have had their best opportunities here in the first 11 minutes of this second half. Better than anything they had in the first half. They were able to convert one of them, but testing Irving three or four times. Darnell King. Schaefer. And Joe Cole. Cole looking. Again, just possession. Ottawa packed back. Will they have to pull it out in a little while? Probably, but so far, the counterattack's been effective in at least creating chances for them. Still a zero on the scoreboard, thanks to great work by Fitzgerald in the first half. Sent across, and Bowden will keep it in. He'll give it for Schaefer. Collins will go forward. A little impatiently, perhaps. Ball flipped in by Bowden, but it's wrist off. Drop back for Cole. Cole. It's taken away by Obasi. And now a long ball, but it's controlled by Collins as Sito can't connect. Touches by almost everyone in white except for Deshaun Brown as the Rowdies moving it around. Vingard now. This is the patience that Stuart Campbell was talking about at the beginning of the second half. Cole into the box. Joe Cole dribbles a little far. It will be a goal kick. And if that's the patience and waiting for that opportunity that they've been getting here in the second half. Good effort there by Joe Cole. Just one bad little touch there to get that a little bit too far ahead of him. Good defending Ottawa on that play. Well, Ottawa will make a substitution. Off will come Sito. And we'll get another look as we look at the substitution coming on by Tucker Yume. Here's yeah, the save. Look here on the corner kick, and it's actually Roseboom that deflects the ball backwards. And Brown just gets his leg up in a piece of it. But good positioning there by Irving. It's Tucker Hume who is on for Ottawa. Cole with it. Looking up, it's to Sean Brown. Back to the goalkeeper, Irving. Pressure by Nanchoff, but stepped aside by Obasi. Long ball and now taken away by the Rowdies. Soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit nikesoccer.com. And it will be a free kick. Ottawa Fury FC in a dangerous spot as the tangle of bodies will get a free kick for Ottawa. Ottawa doing a good job of applying the pressure of the ball. They forced a couple of bad passes from the Rowdies back to Fitzgerald. He had miffs on it, just kicks it out of play. And then on the throw in again, Ottawa just doing a, a good job of getting themselves into good positions, and this is an excellent opportunity for him to equalize here in the 61st. Barton into the box, headed on and over by Ottawa. I believe that was Del Campo up with the opportunity, but could not put it on target. May have been Obasi. 
And it's taken it away. It's like Schaefer may have been fouled. Actually, that's Georgie. Ristoff is taken down, and the Rowdies have a free kick in their own half. Again, you see there the Ottawa Fury players motioning to get up and, and to play a high line. And it seems to be working right now that they're trying to really push back the Rowdies and make them deliver those long balls that they don't want to do. It's off of low. will be a throw in for Ottawa Fury FC. Obasi. And Del Campo. We're going to cross to Eddie Edward. Edward will go into the Rowdies' half. New Collins under pressure, and the Rowdies turn it over. Ottawa doing a good job of taking the ball away in that back third, but the Rowdies have some white shirts behind it. Uh, Sean Brown. It was a good recovery. Darnell King now. King will drop it short and a tackle. Now that's free, Joe Cole. Cole with the shot that will go wide. Goal kick. Ottawa Fury FC. Well, a couple of fortunate bounces. It all started by Deshaun Brown coming back and getting the ball, winning the ball off of the Fury, sending Darnell King up that right-hand side. And a couple of good bounces, and the ball ends up following, following to uh, Joe Cole right here in the box. And... Just a little too far ahead of him, and there you see Edward sliding in at the last moment. Well, this may have gone off Darnell King. No, it did not, and that's actually what appears to be maybe a missed call. It will be a goal kick for the Rowdies as Dos Santos came in. Another substitution made by Ottawa. This time, Ryan Williams will come in for Jonathan Barden. And they'll shift in positions, it appears, as Barden was on the right side. They move someone wide. So Ottawa has made two of their three subs. The Rowdy is still going with their original 11 right now. Georgie Ristoff. Can't win the header, and Neil Collins will get back to his goalkeeper, Akira Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald will send it up the field. And here's Williams looking for help. Sent it into the box, headed on, and it's just wide as a good opportunity for Ottawa. As starting Monday, MOR has your chance to win a getaway to the new Legoland Beach Retreat, which opens today. Watch the Big Bang Theory at 7 and 7.30 and look for the clue to enter. Get more prizes with MOR. Again, that's starting Monday. The Lego Man bit beach retreat for viewers in Tampa Bay. Here is Bowden. Sent wide. Cole. In for Ristop. Back to Cole again. The Rowdies moving it around. Mid guard. Schaefer with room to turn to play it out to Cole. Into Deshaun Brown. He's into the box. He's going to push it wide. Brown and keeper Irving out. Thwarts the shot. Oh, good thought process there by Deshaun Brown. Just with the one touch and then trying to go out and around Del Campo. Just a little bit too far in front of him. Allowed Irving to come out, make himself big, and cut down the angle. And in the 66th minute, the Rowdies will have a free kick. In a good position, leading 1-0. 
Mike Pepper, Lee Godfrey. You can see our Twitter handles at Levon Godfrey and at Sports Tampa. I'll let you guess who's who. Rowdies will play it short. Al Lang Stadium here in Tampa Bay. Actually, it's in St. Petersburg, Tampa Bay area. Right on the water, downtown St. Pete. Can't beat this environment for soccer. And it's a perfect evening. Upper 60s right now. We are around 70 degrees of kickoff. Michael Nanshaw with the ball now, looking for help. He'll get it out wide to King, Darnell King. Looking for a hole in the Ottawa pressure. Rowdy's only able to find one so far. Ball sent towards the back post, and Callum Irving catches that before Georgie Ristoff can get to it. Collins wins the header and the loose ball of Vingard. His pass looking wide for Cole. It's taken away, and as Bowden hooks the Ottawa Fury FC player, it will be a free kick. Let's check in with Heather Donnelly. Mike, you mentioned how nice it is here at Allang Stadium tonight, and it really is. The weather is beautiful. The, the field is beautiful. You have the great views of the water. But head coach Stuart Campbell has said this season that they don't want teams to look forward to coming in here to play. They want to make Allang Stadium a fortress. Between the crowd support and the way that the Rowdies play, they don't want teams to look forward to the trip to St. Petersburg, despite how nice this place really is, guys. Thank you, Heather. Did mention I had a word with him the other day, and he was talking about how teams coming in here. A lot of times, you you find some venues and everything around it are still maybe not the perfect one. But you had this water view and the environment around here. It's something that the may just motivate the other team. One of those things, Lee, is that ball mishit by Irving, and it will still find its way, although it's turned over. Cole tied up and Ottawa gets away with it here as Lowe will push it wide. Well, teams love to come in and play spoiler and they love to play in these types of environments. When you have some teams like Toronto FC 2 who play in the Ontario Soccer Centre uh, just northeast of the city in front of a few hundred fans, they'll revel to come into here and see this type of atmosphere and, and certainly sometimes they do get up to play games like this more so than they might a home game depending uh, on what city you are in the United Soccer League. Played out by Fitzgerald. Looking forward for Deshaun Brown. Touch to Nanchuk. Nanchuk can turn. He does. He's got King overlapping. Darnell King will send it over the crossbar and it will be a goal kick. Yeah, unfortunate there. Not the best ball in there from Darnell King. Nanchov saw him making that run up that left hand side, and that one just got away from Darnell King as he had Deshaun Brown in the middle of the box and Ristov coming in at the back post. Low wins the header, Vingard. Novasi. Everybody standing here now at Al Lang Stadium. Another really good crowd, Mike, here as it really has filled in. A great home support the first three games here uh, of the season. Bad ball by Brown and Ottawa Fury FC look to go forward. Ball sent out wide. And the crowd being implored and motivated by Ralph's mob, the supporters group here for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. That ball will go over. It will be a goal kick for the Rowdies. And for viewers in Tampa Bay, after all the action on the field, check out all the movie action on Tampa Bay's first broadcast movie channel. This TV Tampa Bay, Digital 32.2, Spectrum 630, Frontier Fios 463, and Comcast 229. And Akira Fitzgerald, who had two shutouts to start the year, albeit not tested a lot in either the win against Orlando B or Toronto FC 2. Really had an outstanding first half. Lee, I think you said it. He was probably the player of the half for the Rowdies. 
He certainly was. And that's the first time we've seen him have to come up and make some saves. He looked confident, did well. And this game is 1-0 right now because of Akira Fitzgerald doing his job in the first half. And the foul on Ryan Williams. Cut inside by Darnell King. Read there by Edward, but the second ball in is Joe Cole. He cannot, it's slightly behind him, and Roseboom has it. That is just inches away, Mike. That play is just being a beautiful little one two to send Joe Cole away. Nice step up there by Damian Lowe to win the ball back. Frustration there when you do all that work and you give the ball uh, right back to the rowdy or to the fury. And Obasi now has it. You see, we didn't really touch on it much, and Dos Santos has been a big target for Ottawa Fury FC, but Bringing in Tucker Hume is another big body. They got two big bodies up front now. We'll see how they start to send that in. Of course, the Rowdy is two big central defenders and Lowe and Collins. And Bowden, as their left back, are not undersized by any stretch of the imagination. But we'll see what strategy Ottawa Fury FC will employ here as we hit these last 18, 20 minutes or so of this one tonight. That turn over there by the Rowdies in the midfield. Now it's out wide. Campbell, injured player for the Rowdies, a drop by Hume and Williams. A shot is blocked by Marcel Schaefer. Wrist off and is Schaefer has one of the Rowdies still down. It'll be played towards the corner. And as Irving has it, they will stop. That may be Darnell King. Kyle Porter working hard to. Loosen up. King holding his right ankle. And fa fans, you can stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune into USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts Monday nights at 9 on Sirius XM FC Channel 85. Also, don't forget, Sirius XM FC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check USLsoccer.com for dates and times. So that may have been drop ball here as Irving will send it forward. Second ball now though is Bruna. Bruna drops it in for Campbell. Campbell sends it across the face of the goal. No one there. Ottawa Fury SC with a great chance here in the second half. Now taking advantage and going right back to the player that was injured. Campbell making that run up the left hand side and he gets by Darnell King who was down with the ankle great ball across the face of the goal and there you see Fury not able to catch up with that one but that was very close to making it a 1-1 game here late flipped on to Sean Brown Guard. Ristoff has his pocket pick. Up for Hume. Hume tries to turn Neil Collins to dribble out of bounds. Good job there. Shots on goal. Neil Collins to stay with his runner and make that a throw for the Rowdies because Ottawa has been dangerous on the counter attack and at, at no point in time can you count them out of this because they still have been creating opportunities the Rowdies would love to add that second goal to give them a little bit more breathing room turn from distance is Dos Santos Looking for a little help, doesn't get anything as Akira Fitzgerald plays it short for Damian Lowe.
couple of notes for Rowdy's fans too as Damian Lowe and Neil Collins start their third game together. Tamika McKenna Weary is on the bench tonight for the Rowdies. He's been recovering off season. He's been practicing, but certainly we have two quality ones. He's getting the chance and at least back to the bench, as is Matt Pickens, typically the rowdy starting keeper, but Akira Fitzgerald doing a good job, although could he be tested here? Luke Bowden runs it down. Bowden with the turn in the area. As Dixon won't let him out. Good work by Bowden, but a little scary if you're wearing white. Sent up the field. Be a rowdy throw. Rowdy's going to have to be wary here now as his time ticks on. The Fury are going to have to start pushing a couple numbers forward. They'll leave them susceptible on the counter, but they can't be giving balls away, that's for sure. Nanchoff will take a quick throw. Set to make their third sub as Deshaun Brown is taken down. Joe Cole asking for, let's, where's the advantage here? And on this, it will be a free kick. Jamar Dixon will be making his way off. Jimmy Shamar Sano will come on. Short. Set back, and Neil Collins has to run it down. Sent up the field. Nanchoff. Here's Darnell King. Soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit NikeSoccer.com. Here's Marcel Schaefer running it down. Up to Georgie Ristoff. Ristoff with his third goal of the season tonight. Scored one in each of the games, including the Rowdy's 1-0 victory in the opener. And right now, he's the only one on the board tonight. Joe Cole. And Ristoff may have been offside. Jeez, I don't know about that, Mike. That was I, a, I don't see how that was offside. There's a lot of bodies behind it. Georgie, I did see, was making a run backwards, but the flag came up as the ball played into Georgie. Georgie, you just saw there in the shot, he's putting his arms up and asking if it was him. It looked to me that there was quite a few red jerseys in, in from behind. So here's a look to Georgie. He's offside there. And that's where the ball's yep. played to is. Yeah. By a step. And he comes back from the offside position. So that is the right call. Good job by the Lions to picking that up. Because there were a lot of bodies, but yeah, he was beyond the ball. Looking forward for Deshaun Brown. Sent in, and now it's Ottawa Fury balls. We hit the 80th minute mark. At Al Lang Stadium. Rowdy's set to make their first substitution of the game. Looking long. It's down to the chest of. Santos and Akira Fitzgerald will have to set it up midfield. Loose ball 
comes into Schaefer now Nanchoff. Great ball looking in for Ristoff and it will find the area of Callum Irving. Right idea just a little bit too much on that one. And Irving's able to handle that one in the box. Damian Lowe gets it off the feet of Hume. Back to Obasi. Del Campo. Gerardo Bruna and Hume has it poked off of him, but it will find its way to Obasi, but Joe Cole will come away with a loose ball for Nanchoff, poked it off of Obasi. Sent across. Acrobatic move by Deshaun Brown. Look at that move. Now he'll cut it in and he'll take a shot right at Callum Irving. But a little crouching tiger hidden dragon action there. If I can do a reference from way back when. Cole will stand up, Bruna. Cole will come away, and he's pulled down by Obasi. That should be a card, I would think. He was past him. And we will see the yellow card issued to Obasi here in the 83rd minute. Another look here. Joe Cole trying to get around and had a step on Obasi. That's an easy call there by the official. So Michael Nanchoff over the ball. And this is why the substitution's on hold for a minute so Nanchoff can play this free kick. But they choose to go short for Darnell King. King tries to get to the line and tackled away. It will be a throw in. And it will be for the Rowdies, although Andre Campbell doesn't think that. Vingard. Back to Damian Lowe. Switched across. Long ball. Great ball. Bowden inside. Still has help with Ristoff. Into Brown. It's going to get to him. Brown had a Nanchoff streaking down the middle and he could not turn it. He's limping a little bit. It will be a substitution and Nanchoff will come off for Darwin Jones. Yeah, great play there by Del Campo getting back because. Nanchoff was wide open. No one had him in the box. Jones is ready to come in. As Jones waits to come on. Well, for viewers in Tampa Bay, catch the Rowdies at home all season on this TV, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's first broadcast movie channel. Find this TV at Digital 32.2, Spectrum 630, Frontier Fios 462, and Comcast 229. This TV, your broadcast home for Rowdy Soccer. Well, almost desperation time here for Ottawa as we hit the final five minutes. Rowdies have made one of their three allotted subs. Ottawa has used them all tonight. Rowdies leading 1-0. Roseburg in the game and saw Ottawa with the better of the chances in the first half. The Rowdies have been very good defensively, really limited those chances, but we may have one now as that sent into the box as Dos Santos kept backing into low. He'll fall down, but it's cleared away by the Rowdies. Yeah, and you see right now already Mike Ottawa really pushing forward, putting the pressure on. They're going to be taking some chances here. They're looking for calls in the box. The referee didn't have anything of that last one. And now the Rowdy's taking their time here to get this ball back in, getting some minutes off the clock. But they have to be very, very aware and careful and not uh, let down here at all in the last five minutes and stoppage here to play. Jones. <laughs> Bossy has it. 
Those here at Al Lang Stadium will be treated to a fireworks show tonight at 10 o'clock. Lots of great things happening in downtown St. Petersburg. We welcome you if you're in the area, make your way over for a Rowdies game on the waterfront, downtown St. Pete. will return home in a couple of weeks. In the meantime, they'll hit the road for their first two road games of the year next Saturday and then a midweek game prior to that match against Charleston in two weeks as the ball played for Darwin Jones. It's going to just go past the line. Great idea there, and you see the, the speed that Darwin Jones brings, and he's a stocky guy. He's Got some size about him and some muscle, and, and he can run too. His legs are, his thighs probably the size of my waist. <laughs> well, maybe a few years ago. <laughs> I was reminded of the Burgess Meredith scene from Grumpier Old Men when he asked about the woman's thighs. When he said that. Does she have big thighs? Sent out, headed away by Collins. Williams has it for Ottawa. Sent back, looking across the field for Campbell. Here's Darwin Jones. Sent in. Cole was on the other side. No, he wasn't. He was just across midfield. It was very close. He was definitely off if he was on the side of midfield. But as Darwin Jones touched it, Cole was a step beyond the midfield stripe. Here is Del Campo. He'll just wave him on, and now it'll be Bruna that will run back, and now they'll just let Callum Irving do it. It's 88th minute. Coming up on the 89th minute is Irving at midfield looking to send us in. It's held outside the 18 is the line. Headed up by Hume, but run onto by Bowden. Bowden back towards midfield. Rowdies could get another counter opportunity because Ottawa's pushing everyone forward. Here's Obasi. All the way across the field, King heads it away. Throw in will go Ottawa Fury FC's way. Yeah, good job there by Darnell King. He didn't want to just let that one go because Campbell was right there. It will be a long throw. Hume on the throw. Headed up by low and cleared out. And he'll get the second one too. That ball sent in to Sean Brown in a foot race. Brown will be able to run it down and as he was looking for Cole streaking. He doesn't come in a tackle and now it's sent back forward. Justin Chavez lining to come in here into the 90th minute. Darwin Jones has it. May have been a collision of chins and just saying, play it out. Campbell's up now. Yeah, and that's why you don't play it out in those circumstances, I don't think, because he's completely playing a game there. And in this sport, it's not a must. And when you're only up by one, you're dying moments, and you've got an opportunity to go on the counterattack. I think you take it, Mike, because. I think most of the guys in the Rowdies probably knew that he was not injured. Well, Justin Chavez will come on for Joe Cole. And it will be a Rowdies throw as before that the referee allowed the throw to come in and Ottawa played it up the field just a little bit. Cole making his way off. Chavez making his way on. Obviously a defensive mood here as we just passed over the 90th minute. Stoppage time will be four minutes. And now we'll just have it this way. Actually, I think they had played it that way, but now they'll play it back to Akira Fitzgerald. Yeah, fair play there by the Ottawa Fury. Chavez comes in now to give the Rowdies a little bit more of a defensive mode to hold off the Rowdies. 
or sorry, the Fury, the last four minutes of stoppage here. Up to Deshaun Brown as Chavez heads it into him. Brown has it stripped from him by Obasi. Obasi going wide. He's marked by Schaefer. Deshaun Brown holding onto the ball too much there. He had Georgie Ristov wide open, needed to get it to him first touch. Schaefer tries to get it back to him. It goes off the chest of Ottawa Fury. And C, it'll be a throw in as Luke Bowden tells his players to get forward, looking for some help by Chavez. Another throw for the Rowdies. Trying to run out the clock, leading one to nothing. Towards the corner, Obasi. Tranga go over the line, and it does. It barely is over. Goal kick for Ottawa. Strong leg. Damian Lowe, strong header. Georgie wrist up. Brown may have been offside. He was. So a free kick here. And that's a lot of times you get those offside. You're not so worried about it, but they're going to be able to push all the bodies up there on a free kick. Especially towards midfield. Irving waiting on the bodies to get forward into the 93rd third minute of stoppage time. We're scheduled for four. And that one goes beyond everyone and King or, or actually Jones on either the best fake or a miss hit. But seeing that miss hit right there, Ottawa will have a throw. Jeez, that was terrible there. Mistake by Jones to give the ball right back. See Ottawa Fury as they send it into the box. And Roseboom has it at his feet. Roseboom looking for a little space, cannot tee it up. Edward plays it back in. And now it's sitting by Collins and low, and it's cleared away. Loose ball to Obasi. Tense moments here as the Rowdies are a little sloppy with it. Sent into the box. Headed away. It's still free. Roseboom, can he tee it up? No. And Deshaun Brown can't quite clear it. Another chance, and this time it's taken away. It's Vingard. Martin Vingard, not with the pace, but he'll wait for someone with it. It's Georgie Rista. Schaefer, he got Bowden out wide, and now Brown. Can he take it to the corner flag and try and run the clock out? He's just going to try and hold it there. He's got two players on him, and he'll say it was off of him. It'll be a throw in. Get it back to Irving. Irving, as they try and push everyone up, looks to send it long. From the field of play and looking for Hume. Hume flips it on. Fitzgerald out, and he covers it up before Dos Santos can get there. And he'll throw it out to Bowden. Lots of space. And with that, it is the final whistle. The Rowdies have played three games at home to start the season. And for the third game in a row, they get a shutout victory. They win one nothing on Georgie Ristoff's goal. We'll be back with post game. Be watching Tampa Bay Rowdies and Ottawa Fury one nothing on this TV Tampa Bay. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent from the United Soccer League. And welcome back to Al Lang Stadium, where the Rowdies have knocked off the Ottawa Fury tonight, one nothing. And for the third game in a row, not only has Akira Fitzgerald got a shutout this time, very well earned. Georgie Ristoff got the one goal, and Heather Donnelly is with the head coach of the Rowdies, Stuart Campbell. Thank you, Mike. 
Coach, you're off to about as good of a start as a team could have in the season, picking up nine points here at home. What does it mean to start off with three straight wins? Yeah, I think it's great, and I think it's thoroughly deserved. I think the performances over three games have been very good. And tonight, it was a, a different type of performance. We had to dig in. We had to defend a lot of long balls, a lot of crosses in the area. And the, the defenders were absolutely outstanding, along with the, the goalkeeper and the rest of the, the guys that don't normally come under that sort of pressure. They were, they were excellent. Next weekend, you hit the road for the first time this season, heading to Louisville City. What do you expect now, moving forward this season, that... You won't be here at home all the time, obviously. It might not always be this easy. I know. It wasn't easy tonight, but I know Ottawa done well. And like you said, they put us under pressure. But yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed that we, we can't play at home every week. I mean, who, who wouldn't want to play here in front of these these fans who were absolutely excellent? So yeah, it's, I'm looking forward to it. Louisville. They're a good team. I went to watch them last week when they played Orlando. So it's going to be a, a tough, tough game for us. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Heather. And uh, we will get a break in here. You're watching Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. Can you feel it? That vibe. It's here on America's Best Beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete clear million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. <laughs> There's a lot to a name. Especially when that name is a world leader in healthcare. We still deliver the same compassion we provided for 90 years. Plus the excellence you expect from Johns Hopkins. Together we can conquer the biggest challenges and offer your child the very best care. When, when it, it comes, comes to kids, kids, choose Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. Welcome back to Al Lang Stadium here where the Tampa Bay Rowdies have knocked off Ottawa Fury FC and the fans are certainly celebrating it here as they see their team move to 3-0. Mike Pepper and Lee Godfrey and Lee, uh, you know, you heard Stuart Campbell talk about it after the first two games. Uh, it was a dominant performance and, and came away tonight. They had to fight for it. Second half, Ottawa may have had the better part of the game, but certainly it's a victory well earned. Yeah, I think overall the, the majority of the scoring chances were for the Ottawa Fury tonight, but certainly uh, it only took one opportunity for the Rowdies to score and they did finish on that uh, opportunity that they did have. But it, as we look at those first half highlights, yeah, the Rowdies did come out a little bit strong in that first one coming in from wide spaces and corner kicks uh, as the keeper there for Ottawa having to do all the work in Irving making the save and then it's Georgie Ristoff and this little pass and flick off the post from the Shorn Brown and the best chance for the Rowdies in the first 45 minutes of play uh, there but then it was all of the FC Fury coming forward as Bruno with a big shot there but Akira Fitzgerald to the task just inside the box he lets it rip and then it is Roseboom with the next opportunity for uh, the Rowdies as this one kept coming. That was the close call there for the handball on low, but it may have hit his side of his body. His arm was up, but a great slide tackle here from Roseboom. He continues, gets the shot, and Fitzgerald makes a save. He leaves a pretty fat rebound out there, uh, but no one home for the Ottawa Fury just to tip that one in. And more chances here. Uh, again, this is Fitzgerald just coming out, maybe I think just blocking off uh, Roseboom there, uh, because if he would have been a little, little bit higher up, that would have been a tap in uh, to the open net. And have a look at the goal here as Bowden puts that ball in. It deflects off an uh, Ottawa Fury player, and Georgie Ristop just comes in as Irving comes off of his line, thinking he was going to get that one. And Ristop just neatly. Heads it over him for the first goal of this game. Uh, Georgie again here with another opportunity on a long ball forward, but he just 
gets a piece of it there. And the save, not much for Irving. But then uh, late here, it's Damian Lowe on the corner kick. The ball comes back to him. And some high acrobatics there to, to, to make that connection with the ball, Mike. And uh, again, uh, it, it was a much better 45 for the Rowdies. And here, uh, the close call as the ball goes across the face of the box. And uh, uh, Jesus, some close calls in that one. But uh, you see the stats even out a little yeah. more in this second half. The possession was all Rowdies, but when they went forward, Ottawa was dangerous. They both ended up with three shots on goal uh, and very even, 10 to 11. But it was the one corner or the one goal kit or one goal that was mm -hmm. it Georgie Ristoff and it was the second minute of the second half so Rowdies came out changed the tone and they were able to hang on and they moved to three and oh as they get a victory tonight it's one nothing the Rowdies beat Ottawa Fury FC we'll have more on the post game show you're watching Tampa Bay Rowdy soccer on this TV Tampa Bay can you feel it that vibe it's here on America's best beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. Some people are blessed. Compassion and empathy are second nature. Being selfless increases their self-worth. They consider caring for others a calling, not a sacrifice. And we consider them our role models. Because if humanity can make the world a better place, imagine what it can do for healthcare. The new locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. More than a market. For breakfast, lunch, dinner, eat it here or take it home. Fresh made sushi, pan Asian dishes, mouth watering burgers, ice cold beer, specialty drinks, and decadent desserts. Lunch hour or happy hour. Enjoy it here or take it home. More than a market. Come and taste locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. The fight for the championship continues April 22nd at 7.30. Get rowdy at Al Lang with 90 minutes of manic excitement as the Rowdies take on Charleston Battery. Charleston, bring your A-game because you're going to need it. This is your town. The Rowdies are your team. Tickets start at just $11, and you can meet the players after every game. Charleston, better bring your A-game, because the Rowdies are going to kick your a Come on, you Rowdies! And welcome back here to Al Lang Stadium. It's final tonight. The Tampa Bay Rowdies, after 90 minutes, beat the Ottawa Fury FC one to nothing on a goal by Georgie Ristoff. But a key part in that number, Lee, was zero. And that's Akira Fitzgerald, who had his third shutout, and he's standing by with Heather Donnelly. Yeah, Mike. Akira, in the first two games, you weren't tested too much. Tonight, Ottawa tested you, and you passed. You had a really great, especially first half. What was it like for you out there tonight? Yeah, I mean, uh, just doing my job, really. The guys have been doing a great job in front of me. The chances uh, were from distance, things I'm expected to save, take care of them. So I'm just glad I was able to do my job, help us uh, get this another clean sheet. But the guys in front of me, again, they battled all night. Uh, Damien and Neil were outstanding in the air. We knew they were going to be direct. We were strong in the air and, um, you know, just very happy to get another clean sheet. Yeah, three clean sheets to start off the season. That's huge. How much confidence does that give you moving forward now heading into Louisville, your first road game of the year? Yeah, I think definitely gives us a lot of confidence. Uh, we know we can keep the zero. Uh, the guys in front of us, we know we're dangerous. We'll create chances. So if we get that goal, we always have a good chance to get three points. Um, so, yeah, it's been a great first three games. But, again, it's three games in a long season. So, you know, we'll enjoy this tonight. But then we'll get focused uh, tomorrow for uh, our next two games on the road. All right. Thanks, Akira. Back to you guys. Thank you, Heather. And, uh, Lee, as you pointed out, the, the shots saved from distance. But you know what? It comes through traffic sometimes, and they're dipping. It's a good job by Akira. Yeah, it was really a good job by him today. We didn't see this in the first two matches. Is this one, like he said, from distance, a Bruno the top of the box. Well, that's a pretty good save. It is right at him, but he's got to react properly and get down because those balls move a lot, Mike, when they're uh, shot from distance. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, 
squirrel to them. And again, another one, depending on where this bounces, and that's where you don't want that bounces right in front of right him. There. So good reaction time from Akira Fitzgerald there. And this one again, right on him as well. But he, he didn't have to do any of that the first two games. So good to see uh, some confidence in Akira Fitzgerald. A lot of times it's good positioning. And uh, speaking of good positioning, Georgie Ristoff, where he needed to be. And for the third game in a row, he gets a goal. And Heather Donnelly standing by with Georgie. Yeah, Mike. Mike just set up in the booth third game with a goal. What's working so well for you that you're just able to to put one in every time? Uh, I'm, I don't know just uh, hard work uh, very uh, big dedication every every day uh, obviously I'm very thankful to the whole team. Uh, I think the most important thing is that that's a third win in a row uh, in front of our great crowd uh, three times clean sheet so uh, that's uh, we can ask we couldn't ask for more for for the first three games. Uh, and as I said, every time, as I say, every time after the game, it's good. We enjoy it. Uh, we, you know, and then uh, from Monday we start uh, hard work again for the next game. That's how. That's what. That's how soccer works. Tonight's game seemed to be a, more of a challenge for you guys than the first two. In your opinion, how did tonight against Ottawa Fury compare to the first two? Very tough. Uh, very tough game. Very hard game. Um, but uh, what, uh, what what I noticed was that we all stayed positive. Uh, you know. Uh, um, Confident, we were talking in which within each other. Just stay positive, just do our best, and uh, everything will, will work out great for us. And I'm happy that you know uh, we scored a, a, a nice goal, a good cross from from Luke. So uh, I'm happy we, we got the three points again, and uh, that's uh, that's the best thing for tonight. Thanks, Georgie. Thank you. Guys. Thanks, Heather. And Lee, as Georgie pointed out, and we heard from him after the first game when uh, he struggled but got the penalty kick goal to win. But that's the thing. He says you keep working, and that's what strikers do. You go out, and when you do it, he, gets, he got another goal again tonight. Yeah, it didn't come easy tonight uh, for the Rowdies and for Georgie Ristov, who had a few opportunities. You know, here's that one opportunity where he just whiffed on it. But again, there's that uh, critical little deflection, which really fooled Irving to come off his line. Bowden coming in right there off the arm. And Georgie anticipates that play perfectly at getting in between uh, Irving and the ball and just heading it right up and over. So a fantastic play for his third uh, goal of the season. Well, the Rowdies are 3-0. Again, a shutout victory, this time 1-0. We'll come back more on the post game. This TV Tampa Bay, the official broadcast home for Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, we have a taste for adventure because the only way to know how good something can be is to go for it. Try our veggie smoothies, island green, made with spinach, kale, pineapple, banana, and mango and Caribbean Seaburst with carrots, mango, banana, orange, and goji. Adventure begins with never knowing until you try, but always expecting something great. Go for a veggie smoothie at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Eat better, feel better. Florida Print Solutions is St. Petersburg's leader for the best quality, service, marketing, and printing solutions for your business, always with free pickup and delivery. At Florida Print Solutions, we stand for our community. Superior product quality, effective business solutions, and of course, we stand for printing. Make your next call to Florida Print Solutions and take your business image to the next level. Florida Print Solutions is an official sponsor of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. The stain fighting power of OxyClean. Stains on t shirt, I see it coming out pretty quickly. The stain is gone. That's a huge difference. You can see how it was really disgusting and how white it is now. Looks like the stain is coming out. The OxyClean started to lift it up. I'm pretty impressed. OxyClean, America's number one versatile stain remover. Now get the power of OxyClean in a detergent. One cap beats four of theirs. OxyClean gets the tough stains out. And welcome back here to Al Lang Stadium where the Rowdies have knocked off Ottawa Fury one to nothing 
Mike Pepper, Lee Godfrey, and I believe uh, Heather Donnelly is down with Darnell King. Heather? Yeah, Mike. Darnell, third game in a row, third clean sheet in a row. How great does that feel to start off the season so well? well that's huge. That's huge for all of us. Um, that's a good start to the season. That's a good start for anybody, honestly. Um, we just got to keep rolling with that. And uh, as long as we all stick together and we keep getting these clean sheets, that, that's huge. It uh, just boosts the morale and keeps scoring goals. And, yeah, that will be great for us in the long run. So. Next weekend is your first road game of the season, but you've had your first three here in the friendly confines of Al Lang. How much has that helped, having the support of the home crowd here in St. Pete? Oh, it's huge. You see Ralph Mahal back here. You hear them, and then they're like our, our 12th man on the field, honestly. And then, you know, to hear them after the game chanting our name like that is – it's just heartwarming to know that we got a, a, a fan base like this at home, and hopefully it grows, honestly. To see all these people out here supporting us, it's huge. It only makes us play better. So, All right, thanks, Darnell. Back to you guys. Thank you, Heather. And uh, Lee, you know, you hear him, and he talked about the crowd. You know, the crowd uh, having that, and it's a big part of when you look at the Tampa Bay Rowdies with three games and three victories. They've been a big part of this whole support here for the team. Yeah, they have, and uh, they, it's, it's a huge part of it, and uh, that's why the Rowdies are uh, where they are now with, uh, you know, the nine points, and now they're clear two point of uh, Louisville City uh, FC and, and plus six on the goal differential, not conceding yet this year. So uh, a fantastic start uh, for uh, the Rowdies. I, I believe Nico Campbell, uh, uh, we were talking to him earlier, and if the Rowdies had ever had in the new era uh, a start like this uh, at home, and I don't believe that they have had yeah. that. So uh, to get the full nine points is a, is a great job. Right now you do see 15th Ottawa Fury, but uh, they will be much higher than that when you look at some of those because that is a good team the Rowdies beat tonight and in two weeks we'll see the team that's currently sitting in that third spot we'll see how it all plays out with the Rowdies with a couple of away games they get the Charleston Battery and that's right here at Al Lang Stadium our pregame begins at 7 on this TV Tampa Bay that's digital 32.2 Frontier 463 Spectrum Channel 630 and Comcast 229 so the Rowdies and the Battery will be in two weeks but the Rowdies do have two away games in that time and you know that's one of the keys we'll see how this team reacts on the road hey, yeah exactly it's been nice to have the home games but now how will this team uh go uh, as we do look at the, their road games louisville city fc and then a tough one against fc cincinnati we know the crowd support there they'll have uh, probably over twenty thousand fans uh, at that game and they have faced them before in the U.S. Open Cup last year, so they're familiar to seeing uh, FC Cincinnati. So it's going to be a, another big challenge uh, for them moving forward. Yes, it will. And we'll have a little bit more on the post game when we return. You're watching Tampa Bay Rowdy Soccer on this TV, Tampa Bay. We got the sun. to shop and dine in downtown St. Petersburg. at Sundial in St. Petersburg. More than a market for breakfast, lunch, dinner, eat it here or take it home. Fresh made sushi, Pan-Asian dishes, mouth-watering burgers, ice cold beer, specialty drinks and decadent desserts. Lunch hour or happy hour. Enjoy it here or take it home. More than a market. Come and taste locale at Sundial in St. Petersburg. The fight for the championship continues April 22nd at 7.30. Get Rowdy at Al Lang with 90 minutes of manic excitement as the Rowdies take on Charleston Battery. Charleston, bring your A-game because you're going to need it. This is your town. The Rowdies are your team. 
Tickets start at just $11, and you can meet the players after every game. Charleston, better bring your A-game, because the Rowdies are going to kick your a Come on, you Rowdies! And welcome back to St. Petersburg, Alling Stadium. The Rowdies knock off Ottawa Fury one to nothing. And of course, the crowd getting ready for the fireworks show at 10 o'clock. And early on tonight, Lee, they saw a little bit of fireworks as the Rowdies able to control play. Not really put a lot on net, but the first 15, 20 minutes, it was a pretty dominant. But then all of a sudden, Ottawa kind of took over. Yeah, they did. And uh, Ottawa weathered the storm in the first bit of that first half. And they were able to defend and really keep the Rowdies outside, not cause them to have any really good goal scoring opportunities and then they found themselves getting into the game this is the difference when you're playing a non MLS affiliated club that it is going to be more difficult and we saw the the evenness uh, for much of this game and especially throughout the ending of that first half and uh, certainly Ottawa if it wasn't for Akira Fitzgerald could have been up after 45 and then of course right then in the second half the Rowdies came out and early on in the first two minutes they were able to get that goal and kind of change it they really were the better team throughout the second half Ottawa kind of kept in check you know their chances of possession really weren't as dangerous and uh, that brings us to our impressive play of the game Lee yeah and that is it this is the goal because this was probably the best play of the game for the Rowdies and it came together you know off of a bit of a broken play Bowden just sending that ball in it gets deflected just outside the box right there and there you can see a Georgie just being Johnny on the spot the right place the right time Callum Irving tries to come off of his line and just got caught in no man's land and he pops it in the open net you can see the next two are on the road with a next Saturday and a Wednesday night. But then if you're Saturday night in uh, St. Petersburg, hey, you should make it. Both the Charleston Battery and Richmond Kickers. Actually, that Richmond Kickers game is here as well on the 29th. So the Rowdies have a, a couple more chances, but they got to handle the road first. Yeah, they do. And uh, Charleston Battery is, is going to be a, a big challenge. One of the uh, clubs up in the USL standings right now. And, of course, you can catch that on this TV, Tampa Bay Digital 32.2, Frontier 463. Spectrum 630 and Comcast 229. That's two weeks from tonight right here at Al Lang Stadium in downtown St. Petersburg. So, I know, Lee, uh, again, you know, final thoughts uh, real quick. It was, hey, you're 3-0. That's exactly it. That's what you have to take away with this. It doesn't matter what the scores are. They haven't conceded a goal, and they managed to come away with nine points in their first three games. Fantastic. Yep, and uh, our thanks to Heather Donnelly working hard on the sideline. For Lee Godfrey, I'm Mike Pepper. I want to remind you here that this TV Tampa Bay is where you can catch all your Rowdy soccer all year. Right now, you can catch the match in five.
that vibe. It's here on America's best beaches. Feel it in unique mashups of amazing, crazy, and wow. So within every moment, you live amplified. St. Pete Clearwater, solar powered and radiating a million megawatts of possibility. Dive in deeper at liveamplified.com. Some people are blessed. Compassion and empathy are second nature. Being selfless increases their self-worth. They consider caring for others a calling, not a sacrifice. And we consider them our role models. Because if humanity can make the world a better place, imagine what it can do for healthcare. Continues April 22nd at 7.30. Get rowdy at Al Lang with 90 minutes of manic excitement as the Rowdies take on Charleston Battery. Charleston, bring your A-game because you're going to need it. This is your town. The Rowdies are your team. Tickets start at just $11 and you can meet the players after every game. Charleston, better bring your A-game because the Rowdies are going to kick your a Come on, you Rowdies!